For a limited time, get a medium meats pizza made with five premium meats free of artificial flavors or fillers. Or our new barbecue meats pizza made with smoky southern style barbecue sauce for only $6.99 each. Better ingredients, better pizza. Papa John's. Prices and participation may vary. Taxes, tip, and delivery fee extra. Welcome back to Papa John's Countdown to Kickoff. 501 East 17th Street is the address. You can dine inside there as well or give them a call at 620-665-7272. Well, week number two, look, a few teams already have buys. A, a big game with Dodge City traveling to Garden City, guys. That'll be a, a big one. Butler with the, with the buy. And, of course, I think ours is probably the biggest with number five uh, Independence uh, hosting uh, Hutchison kickoff just moments away. So uh, your thoughts on Independence, Darren, I'll let you take it away first. It's interesting to see all this talent that you guys have already talked about earlier in this show. What's even crazier is that Coach Brown told SB Nation that he doesn't teach a lot of X's and O's, and he says that he is not teaching these players anything. That includes his 22-year-old coaches. So there's enough talent to just throw these guys out on the field and kind of say, hey, go play backyard football and hope for the best, and it's worked. It's, it, it has worked, but at, at some point it's going to catch up to you. Now the league kind of has Independence's M.O. and a, a good game plan. Butler proved it, you know, proved it last year. Butler beat them, then inexplicably lost to Iowa Central the next week. But Butler beat Independence with a controlled type style of ball game. You're going to have to be disciplined to beat this team. And I'm not sure the discipline is there, so that's one thing that's going to take place. And we'll have to see. We're going to have to take care. Like I said in the last segment, we can't have the silly tur uh, turnovers or the silly the penalties. Well, it's interesting you mentioned the penalties because Independence had 14 of them for 118 yards in week one against Dodge. The defense did, though, hold Dodge City to one of 12 on third down, sacked the QB five times, had an interception, and forced four fumbles. On Dragon Talk, Coach Rhodes had the opportunity to talk about what he thought about the Independence matchup. Here's what he had to say. Very talented. Uh, I think they might be a little bit faster on defense than they were last year. Offensively, just a lot of weapons. You know, they they played uh, three different quarterbacks against Dodge. Um, all of them looked good. The, the first guy they had uh, looked extremely fast and athletic. He's a transfer from Georgia Tech. Uh, the other two guys, they had a lefty and, and another kid that played for him that uh, both were uh, real solid players, too. So I think top to bottom, you know, it'll be one of the most talented teams we play. So there you have it. Of course, Coach is going to have a little bit more to go on because he has some film from that Dodge City Indy matchup, which we didn't have against Ellsworth this last week. So I think it's going to be a good ball game. So uh, I'm anxious for it to get going and should be uh, coming up again just in a little bit. Final thoughts, Steve? One of the stats Darren brought was third down efficiency. The Blue Dragons themselves were really just one of 12 last week on their own third down conversions. They need to improve that, try to keep that defense rested and off the field and put together some sustained drives, score a few more points early, and I think the Blue Dragons are going to be in great shape. Definitely play within yourself. We talked a little bit about that last week. Only do what you can do, and if that's your best, you know at the end of the day you gave your best, that's all you can ask for. Well, that's pretty well going to wrap up this segment of the Papa John's uh, Countdown to Kickoff. we got kickoff just around the corner right down here at Independence. Be sure and join in as Rusty's set to go. Darren will be a sidekick. I'll be on the sideline. Steve, as always, appreciate your fine thoughts and input into the Countdown to Kickoff. As always, yours the same way with you, Darren. So let's get a ball game going. We'll be back with the kickoff coming your way right after this. This has been the Papa John's Countdown to Kickoff with Glenn Grunwald, Darren Dunn, and HCC Sports Information Director Steve Carpenter. Brought to you by Papa John's. Better ingredients, better pizza, Papa John's. Stay tuned. The kickoff to tonight's HCC Blue Dragon football game is just ahead on Eagle Radio. It's time for Hutchinson Community College Sports. The Blue Dragons on Eagle Radio are brought to you in part by Rothy Family Flooring, Erickson Custom Building, H&R Block, Prairie Star Health Center, The Medicine Shop, Ashcraft Pharmacy, Reno County Area Transit, RCAT, Next Tech Wireless, Midwest Ford and Toyota, Salt City Pond, Anchor In and Anchor Away, and these Sportscaster Club members, Lowen Corporation, Burning Chiropractic, Dr. Robert Epp, Portfolio Recovery Associates, Green Vision Group, Craig Barkley Plumbing, and Mega Man. Manufacturing Sideline reports courtesy of Jackson Meat. All the exciting action of the Blue Dragons is on now. Let's go to the broadcast booth for the play-by-play -play with the Eagle Sports Crew on Eagle Radio. A very pleasant Saturday evening, everybody, and welcome to another night of Blue Dragon football. For the first time in 2018, Hutchinson's Blue Dragons are on the road, and what a challenge they face, but what an opportunity as well. 
as the Blue Dragons for the second consecutive year are in Independence to take on a pirate football team ranked among the elite in the nation. While we enjoy our national anthem here, we're going to pause a little bit, let you hear from these fine folks. We'll be back with lots more. Next Tech Wireless Advanced Pay gives you great coverage, 4G LTE data, and you'll love the price. Plans start at $25 a month. Next Tech Wireless Advanced Pay is hassle-free, too. No contracts, no credit checks, and you can even bring your own device. Sign up now and get a free month of service when you purchase a new device or receive a free Moto E smartphone with new activation. It's Advanced Pay at Next Tech Wireless, starting at just $25 per month. Hi, Brian Bobo, General Manager at Midwest Supersource. It's a holiday weekend, and we're going to celebrate, but only for a short time. We will only be open from 10 to 4 on Labor Day, and we are having our penny over sale. That's right, a penny over on all new Ford and Toyotas. We didn't forget about pre-owned. We have reduced prices on all of our inventory. Remember, you only have a short time, so come see us on Labor Day from 10 to 4, or visit us online at MidwestSuperstores.com. Needing repairs, parts, belts, or bags for your vacuum? How about free pickup and delivery for any service? Hi, this is Donna Pitzer, the bag lady. I work on all vacuums, including Auric, Kirby, Simplicity, Dakar, Hoover, Finmore, and all Panasonics. I can get bags and parts for almost any vacuum. Plus, in most cases, I'll save you up to 40% on your bag purchase. Best of all, I deliver at no charge for parts and service of your vacuum. Call me Donna Pitzer, the bag lady, at 663-4322 for text vacuum cleaners to just text it. One of the bigger crowds in a long, long while situated tonight at Emmett Field. Uh, we're in Schultz Stadium season. When the weather in Independence, Kansas, about a 170-mile drive from Hutchinson. Nice, pleasant drive down this afternoon. It's a one night and two very, very good football teams. Ryan Rhodes, Blue Dragons, as you guys talked about in the countdown to kickoff, kind of wore down Ellsworth last week. Dragons winning that one 30-12. By the way, Ellsworth went to 0-2 with a loss this afternoon, the only league game played in the Jayhawk. Ellsworth lost 17-10, and that loss was to Highland. The Independence Pirates, well, they lost a quarterback early in the game out in Dodge City last Saturday, but it didn't really slow them down much. It was 24-10 at halftime. It wound up 38-20. Jason Brown has kind of gotten it done here. Either you love him or you hate him. And if you live in Independence, you probably are in the category where you love him. Elsewhere, I suspect it might go the other way. He's a controversial figure, but you can't take away Darren Dunn from the success that he has here. 14 and 6, now 15 and 6 in two seasons. I think winning cures a lot of things, and it allows you to turn a blind eye to some of those other things that are going on. Now, if it was a reverse situation where he went two and nine in season. It's football season, when the weather is warm one day and cold the next. Stay ahead of cold and flu season by drinking plenty of liquids, getting enough rest, and keeping your hands sanitized. Come see the friendly folks at Ashcraft Pharmacy, your locally owned Health Mart Pharmacy, for over-the-counter medications to help alleviate symptoms. And if you need a prescription, we offer free mail-out, free delivery, or call ahead for our handy curbside service. Go Dragons! From Ashcraft Pharmacy in the Heart Shopping Center, South Hutchinson, and Health Mart, caring for you and about you. HCC Sports is brought to you by the Sportscaster Club members, Portfolio Recovery Associates, Dr. Robert Epp of the Hutchinson Clinic, Barkley Plumbing, Burning Chiropractic Center, Tim and Gina Ritter, along with Brian Strange of the Green Vision Group, Sutton Kaufman Transmission Service, Wade Patton Insurance, A&A Builders, Bold Office Shears, Mega Manufacturing, MAYB, Mid-America Youth Basketball, Low Corporation, and by Man, Wyatt, and Rice, LLC. These Sportscaster Club members help provide funds for HCC scholarships. Hey. 
has designed, built, and remodeled homes and commercial projects in central Kansas. Whether you're looking to replace a deck, wanting to build an addition, or remodel your kitchen, our customers receive individualized attention, quality craftsmanship, and exceptional customer service from start to finish. Erickson Custom Building offers new construction and remodeling services in addition to commercial and insurance projects. Visit our website today at ericksoncustombldg.com. national ranking and for the Blue Dragons who were in the receiving votes category in the first poll of the football season with a solid win last week a win here tonight over the Independence Pirates that would set the Blue Dragons up to move up in the national rankings this is the time of the year where everybody is dreaming about a national championship the Blue Dragons will be kicking to the Independence Pirates to get things underway but before we do that, let's take one more one-minute break for these friends of Hutchinson Community College. Welcome to the Hutchinson Medicine Shop. With the emergence of big business, not only in pharmacy, but all industries, the Medicine Shop is proud to be a thriving local business in Hutchinson. We're so thankful to our customers in Hutchinson, Reno County, and Central Kansas for your support. In turn, we're proud to be a major sponsor of the Hutch High Salthawks, as well as other area high schools, the Blue Dragons, Chiefs, Royals, Jayhawks, and Wildcats. You support us, and the Hutchinson Medicine Shop supports Supports local sports. Just when you thought you were done with taxes, you got a letter from the IRS. Maybe you're being audited, or maybe you filed for an extension and still need some tax help. We at HR Block are there for you. We don't stop working on April 15th. Our tax professionals are here to help you year round. So if you have tax issues you need a hand with, even if HR Block didn't do your taxes the first time around, visit our offices in Hutchinson, Lyons, or Ellsworth and let our experienced tax professionals help get you every dollar you deserve. It's no secret that these two teams don't much like each other. Also no secret that the coaches are certainly not going to send Christmas cards to each other. Glenn, I'm wondering about the intensity level on the Dragon sideline, given that friction between the two squads. Very relaxed, very focused, uh, not a lot of hype so far as I can tell, just very quiet. Some prayers taking place, as players usually do, that are are uh, solid with faith. They take a knee and, and pray, and it's just a, it's, it's more like a business day down the sidelines. More than I've ever seen it, actually, so I think they're pretty focused, guys. We have a pretty good chance that we will get this game completed before the game a year ago got started because it was delayed until almost the 10 o'clock start uh, because of Niwala. I definitely remember leaving here about 1 in the morning to drive back to Hutchinson. It will be nice to get out of here earlier. Hopefully, for the Blue Dragons, they can do so with a win. Dragons are the first to take the field. And again, it will be the Independence Pirates receiving the football. They will work from left to right as you listen. That's from north to south, which means they'll work against what breeze there is, and there isn't much. Back deep for the Pirates, standing at his 10-yard line, Kalon Davis. He's a big kid, 6'4", 240-pounder. Actually, that is not right. Wilcox is back deep. That is... Number six on offense, that's Matthew Wilcox. He stands at the 10-yard line. Here comes the Dragon kickoff from the 35-yard line. Spinner, returnable. Taken by Wilcox at the 1. Angles to his right, comes out to the 10, to the 15, to the 20, and is upended just shy of the 25-yard line. Nice takedown for the Blue Dragons on that tackle. It was Ronald Williams making the play. They really had to close that gap fast because there was definitely a lane for Wilcox to get through. Had he been a little bit faster, he might have been gone. Quarterback Chase Hildreth came on for the injured starting quarterback a week ago and made it look pretty easy with three touchdown passes. He starts about four yards deep, anticipating the snap. Two wide outs to the left, man in motion across the formation, left to right. 
Long count. Another man comes across the formation left to right and then returns to the left. Finally, the snap. Hildreth back to throw. Being chased, gives ground, throws it upfield, throws it out of bounds. Good job by Tramel Walthauer getting in there and pressuring the quarterback. Otherwise, that might have been a more accurate throw. A lot of things going on before the snap. A lot of movement along that line before the snap, which is okay. This time, two wideouts left, one right. Hildreth takes a quicker snap, hands it off, and there's a hole off the left side, and a cut back to the middle, and all the way out to the 40-yard line, exploding through the hole with a big gainer. It is Corinthian Cunningham. He'll pick up a first down. His longest run of the season had just a five-yard run last week. Is his longest before that carry was averaging .4 yards per carry. Hildreth hands off again, and again it is Cunningham. Puts his head down low, angles left this time. Touched the knee at about the 43, maybe the 42-yard line. They're going to put it back closer to the 42. A gain of two. Second down. Again, the hurry up, and the ball thrown out in the left flat between two receivers. Neither one of them saw it. I think they might have been looking toward the sun. Anyway, it's an incomplete pass. It'll be third down and eight, an opportunity for the Dragon defense to get an early stop. Timing was well off between Hildreth and King that time. King hadn't even gotten out of his break, and by the time he saw the ball, it was sailing past him. First big third down of the football game, just underway, no score. Hutchinson Independence, Jayhawk Conference football. Man in motion, left to right across the formation. Hilbert takes the snap, throws it in the middle of the field. It is caught, but short of the first down. Caught by the big tight end, that is Bryson Cannon with the catch. He is a yard shy of the first down at the 49-yard line. Independence normally goes for it in this situation, and they will here. Quarterback checking with Coach Jason Brown on the sideline. He's good with the go on fourth down. Can the Dragons get a stop? Hilbert takes the snap, hands off, and the answer is no. A hole off the left side and a flag as falling to the turf after picking up the first down, Corinthian Cunningham. This team was so good on fourth down last year when these two teams met. They had a 67% conversion rate last year when the Dragons took on the Pirates. And injured Blue Dragon on the play. That is big number 99, Jamichael Neal. 6'3", 338-pound freshman nose guard from Charlotte. And it looks like it looks like maybe it's, maybe it's just a cramp. But major penalty on the Blue Dragons. I think they called face mask. Yeah, they, they called not. on the defense, and the automatic first down went along with it. So down to the 32-yard line of Hutchinson. Opening drive of the football game. Pirates looking pretty solid offensively. Cunningham has been solid at the running spot. Hildreth doing a good job directing the offense. He takes the snap from center as Amanda Booza in motion across the formation. Rolls to his left, wants the throw, pumps once, now throws out of bounds. Might have just thrown that one away. Kid's a left-handed quarterback, pretty good-looking quarterback by way of how he scrambles and handles himself out of Houston, Texas, sophomore. Second down, 10. Last year's quarterback, Malik Henry, is on the squad. There was some controversy about whether Jason Brown would bring him back. He has. Perhaps an injury to his starting quarterback a week ago has something to do with that. Hildreth takes the snap and hands off. And this time Cunningham doesn't get much as he tries to get to the corner on the left side and has his legs cut out from under him at the 31-yard line. Third down, very long. Almost nine yards to go. Uh, right, defense last, yeah, go ahead, Glenn. Defense last time held him at three, but then on fourth down they were able to get the first down. Let's see what happens here. Probably a passing situation. Never know for sure. But the Dragons dial up a blitz. Hildreth takes the snap, has time, unloads, throws it out to the left, catch made. And the Blue Dragons with a good job of covering catch up quickly with Corinthian Cunningham. He is well short 
of the first down. It'll be fourth down and four. Dayton Thomas Hutchinson just 26. added to the roster this week, making a big play there. Open field tackle play he had to make. And the Pirates will go for it again, fourth down and four at the Hutchinson 26-yard line. Opening drive of the football game, which is scoreless. Hildreth comes back, pressure comes, being chased, throws it away. And the Blue Dragons will take over. Nice job, pressure coming up the front. Hildreth nowhere to go with it. Just didn't take the sack, simply threw it away, and the Dragons will get the football at the 26. Leading the way was Clarence Hicks, and he had two sacks last week. So now it is the Blue Dragons' turn to see what they can do. The Blue Dragon quarterback will be Mason Shucker. He is a 6'4 youngster out of Searcy, Arkansas, 207-pounder, a freshman. Had a so-so debut a week ago, obviously nervous, went 12 of 30, just under 100 yards passing, did throw an interception. There. All right, there is a flag. Yeah, I was wondering if they're going to throw that. He threw that away in the pocket. That's intentional grounding. Okay. So the Blue Dragons will actually gain some yards on this turnover on downs because that carries with it a loss of down. So the ball comes out to the 38-yard line. The Dragons will have it there. Again, Mason Shucker works from about five yards deep. Hands off. Dragons take it to the right side on the run. And it's a nice job by Aaron Collins as he's able to cross the midfield mark with a first down for Hutchinson at the 49-yard line. The edge was set by big old Rico Nix out there on the right side at 6'5", 247. So it is a trip into opponent's country for the Blue Dragons on the first play from scrimmage for Hutchinson. Again, the handoff, and again, a nice run this time in traffic. A couple of yards for Aaron Collin. Last week, he had 104 yards on 17 tries. Also managed to catch a couple of passes. I like the way the kid from Plant City runs. He picks, he's kind of flows with the flow a little bit. He's not accelerating too fast. Picks his blocks up and two nice runs right here to start this ball. Yeah, game. they said his knee touched at the 48, so it's more like second down nine. Dragons will stick with the run and getting to the edge. Turn him in the corner again is Collins. He is out of bounds. Close to a first down at the 39 of the Pirates. And it is a yeah, got first, first down. down. That was the question by Coach Rhodes. Can we get to the edge? And already on the first couple of plays here for the Blue Dragons, they've not only been able to get there, they've been able to exploit the sideline. Ball resting at the 39 of the Pirates. Pirates got to the Hutchinson 26 before running out of downs on their first drive. Right, and just keep giving it to Collins. This time a pass play and the ball delivered over the middle and dropped right in the hands, right in the hands of Leroy Watson at the 20-yard line. Just simply couldn't hang on. A blocking tight end. He does such a great job, and that's been his M.O. since last year when he has those opportunities to pull in even touchdown passes. It just slips right through. Perfectly placed pass. The offensive line gave Shucker plenty of time to drop it in there. Just a missed opportunity by Leroy Watson, the fourth. So it is a second down and 10 at the 39 of the Pirates. Scoreless game. We've played four minutes. Long count. And the ball thrown out in the flat, and nobody home. That pass loosely intended for Jalen Irwin. He got tangled up with a defensive back. Couldn't get anywhere close to it. 0 for 2 now in the passing category, Mason Shucker. And when you throw on the first two downs and you're incomplete, you almost put yourself into a situation where you're going to throw a couple more times. Yeah, they thought they had a chance there with Chris Bell covering Irwin one-on-one, but the ball was released deeper than Irwin had a chance to release to. Third down 10 at the 39. Yeah. Yeah, we had a pulling guard. So that will be a procedure penalty against the Blue Dragon. Glenn's comments on the sideline, by the way, courtesy of Jackson Meat. We're coming up on a big holiday on Monday. You might be oh, yeah. wanting to grill out, and there's no better place than Jackson Meat to go get your product. This will work for the Blue Dragons as they caught the defense offside. All right. Sure did. I thought they had us on a pulling guard, number 76. I thought Fears might have pulled a little early, but not the case. 
That's third down and five in the playbook opens up with more options. Shucker takes a snap, gives it back to Collins, and Collins is short of the first down by a couple of yards, maybe three at the 32-yard line. It is fourth down for Hutchinson. The Hutchinson field goal kicker, if you're thinking that way, is Sebastian Garcia. He's a little banged up with a groin injury. So I'm kicking the field goals in this area in the warm-ups, about a 50-50 shot, and instead of the field goal, the Dragons will go for it. Fourth down three. Must get to the 29-yard line. Shucker will first try to draw the Pirates offside. Takes the snap, gives it to his favorite running back, and it's going to be a Dragon first down. Broke the plane of the 30, so let's see where the final progress is. I think it's going to be the 29, so that should be good enough for the first down. So the Blue Dragons going for it. Close enough to take a look at it, or will they just simply move the markers? They'll move the markers. Dragon first down. 0-2 on fourth down last week to start the season. Good start to get that fourth down here, especially knowing that the Pirates turned it over on fourth down just a possession ago. Now at the 29-yard line. Shucker again, about five steps back, takes a snap, unloads over the middle, and it is caught. Caught at the 25-yard line. A really solid catch by Khalil McLean. Actually turned around to face the quarterback, caught it right in the chest, managed to hang on at the 26. It's a gain of just three or four. Nearly lost it off of his shoulder pad. Lucky to pull that back in. Positive yardage, nevertheless, on first down. Dragons definitely in three-down territory. Second down. We'll call it six. Looking toward the sideline. Mason Shucker. Now he's ready. Loads it up. Throws it out. Has a man. And it is going to be a Dragon touchdown. Caught in the right-hand corner of the end zone. That is... Number 12, Jalen Irwin for the Dragons, and the Dragons with an impressive start to the evening. Shucker had what he wanted on the outside. Another big strike to Jalen Irwin. You saw it in the season opening game. They had him against the Quan Gresham, and Irwin beat Gresham to the end zone. First blood in the contest for the Dragons. The score comes with 9-0-1 remaining in the first quarter. Dragons only have 10 people out there. They'll have to hurry up. The holder comes out there. And the extra point try by Sebastian Garcia is up, and it is down central. Hutchinson 7. Pirates have yet to score. We'll have the Dragon kickoff for you in just half a minute. The Rothy family name has always been connected to serving the Hutchinson community. And you can expect the same kind of high-quality service when you visit Rothy Family Flooring. They believe you deserve to be treated like family, so they've invested in their own talented and trustworthy installers to lay your floors. No outside contractors will ever knock on your door if Rothy works for you. Let them show you their expansive selection of name brand flooring and trust your home to the best. Rothy Family Flooring, 325 North Main, Hutchinson. An impressive mixture of running by Aaron Collins and passing by Mason Shucker. And the Blue Dragons put together a drive that started at their own 38-yard line and ends with seven points. Nine-play drive finished by that 26-yard pass. You saw everything in it that you wanted from being able to run the ball inside and out and seeing that you had opportunities down the field. Sebastian Garcia kicks. Caught a lot of it and drills it way into the end zone and out the back. So it will come out to the 25-yard line. And the Pirates will start there for the first time in the game. They trail 7-0. Defensively for the Pirates, they had pretty good coverage on that pass, but Irwin just was able to go up and jump him, and the defensive man did not turn around. A nice 26-yard catch and TD. And the Hutchinson quarterback, Mason Shucker, who was perhaps a little bit lacking in confidence with the throwing game a week ago, should be building some confidence with that demonstration. Quarterback for the Pirates continues to be Chase Hildreth. Now let's not forget that the Pirates moved it down the field before they ran out of downs at the Hutchinson 26-yard line. 
This time they start at their own 25 with wideouts left and right, single running back back beside the quarterback. Hildreth takes the snap, drops back, loads it up left-handed, throws it down the field, got a man there, and he is shoved out of bounds. Otherwise, it probably would have been a touchdown. They found Marquise King way downfield at the Hutchinson 38-yard line, and had it not been for Josh Relliford shoving him out of bounds, he might still be running. So a big play for the Blue Dragons, big-time receiver, and now you get one from the Pirates in King. At the Hutchinson 38-yard line, Hildreth takes the snap, hands it off, and the Dragons are equal to the task. Nowhere to go whatsoever for Corinthian Cunningham, and we're going to call it no gain on the play. Second down, 10. Monty Montgomery lost his helmet on that tackle, so he'll have to come out for a down. He led this team in tackles against Ellsworth with seven and a half. Actually closer to a loss of a yard. Let's make it second down, 11. Hildreth stands back at his 45-yard line, line of scrimmage, the 39. Hildreth fakes the handoff, throws it over the middle, got his man. And this will be a touchdown for the Pirates. Crossing pattern right over the middle, and it is hauled in by Marquise King. Beautifully thrown. And it's a three-play, 75-yard drive for the Pirates, who are within one of tying the game. They found the matchup they wanted again. King against Demarie Givens. King got the better of him again. So the Blue Dragons work pretty hard to get their seven and then give up a big pass play. And then another pass play. Two pass plays covering 75 yards. And the extra point kicker will try to tie it up for the Pirates. The kick is up, and we are tied at seven. The kick drilled through. So, all square at seven. It was, it was 94. I was looking at 44. It was Ryan Redmond that kicked it. All right, we'll take a break. 7-7. Seven, seven. We've not proved a thing in the game's first seven minutes. When you have kids in school, there are lots of things to remember and keep track of, like school physicals and sports physicals and the very important immunizations. So to you and your children, welcome to Prairie Star Health Center, whether you have insurance or not. Pediatrician David Smith wants to make sure your children stay healthy. He's here for you at Prairie Star Health Center, 30th and K61 in Hutchinson. For the first time tonight, the Pirates will kick to the Dragons, and the kick against the Breeze is going to be taken at the 12-yard line, brought out quickly to the 20, to the 25, maybe to the 26 or 27-yard line, brought back by Khalil McClain for Hutchinson. Dragons will start at the 26, game tied at 7, and still eight minutes remaining in period number one. 2-1-0 and basketball our 2-1-0 football teams. Basketball season will be here soon enough. We are playing football, big-time football, tonight in Independence. Dragons a man short. Now they get the right personnel out on the field. Big number 82, Rico Nix, sets up on the left side of the offensive formation. And the Dragons go back to the run. And a hole at the 30, at the 35, at the 40, and out of bounds at the 45-yard line. Right now, the Blue Dragons are able to get Aaron Collins to the outside, and he is having fun. They've done it with plenty of blockers on the front line. We saw Rico Nix do it earlier. This time, Robert Mervin sealing that outside path. Dragons out to the 45-yard line. It is a 19-yard gain for Aaron Collins, who is rapidly becoming a Blue Dragon favorite. Twin wide outs to the right side. That's the wide side of the field. Collins stays back there with quarterback Mason Shucker. And Shucker will give him another chance. This time he goes to the other edge. Managed to turn the corner. He's at the 50 and spun out of bounds at the 48-yard line of the Pirates, but not before a gain of seven on first down. You mentioned the ability for Leroy Watson the fourth to really block. He showed it there. If he can get those hands together, as we saw that drop pass earlier, he would be a complete tight end. 
actually stepped out of bounds one step shy of where I thought he went out. They put it down right at the 50, so it's a second down and five. Shucker takes the snap, and this time the Dragons are going to be caught in the backfield. New running back in there for the Blue Dragons, and not nearly as effective. That will be a loss back to the Hutchinson side to the 48-yard line. Running back was Latavian. Was that number 21, guys? Yeah, Desmond Jackson in Desmond, there now. Oh, it's 27. Desmond Jackson in there for the Dragons. Third down and seven. Jackson did some dazzling of his own a week ago. Special teams player of the week. Long count. Now quarterback is ready. Steps back. Throws short. Catch made at the 50. Stiff arm and battling for yardage and trying to get free but being pulled out of bounds at the 44-yard line with the ball securely in his hand. Cephas Smith is enough for a dragon. First down. Needed about seven. Got eight. Ran a beautiful route, just sat down in that window and actually had a few seconds before the defense could get to him that allowed for Shucker to drop that ball right in there. Dragons on the move with another first down. Now at the Pirate 44. Game tied at 7. 6.15 left, first quarter. And the Dragons go back to the run at a hole. At the 40, at the 35, at the 30, carrying people with it. Down to the 28-yard line. Desmond Jackson, another Blue Dragon first down. Rico Nix is opening up lanes, and if he has a pancake category on the stat list, he just got a couple on that one play alone as he took down Jaquiz Cross. At the 29 of the Pirates, the Blue Dragons trying to get the lead back. They led this at 1.7 nothing. Now it's 7-7. Shucker takes the snap. Again the run. Jackson again a hole. Sparks through it. At the 20. At the 10. At the 5. Dives for the pylon. Touchdown. Blue Dragons. Desmond Jackson. Desmond Jackson from 29 yards out. And the Blue Dragons back on top in this game. 13-7. All right, a different style than Collins, but very effective. Kind of darted to the outside, turned on some jets, and down the left sideline he went. 29-yard touchdown run. Again, Glenn's comments down on the sideline, brought to you by Jackson Meat. You know, you need some meat for that cookout. Jackson's is the place you ought to think about. Extra point is up. The extra point is good. And Hutchinson with 546 remaining in period number one, 14. In the Independence Pirates, playing at home, 7. Hutchinson's kickoff, up next in half a minute. When you're looking for jewelry that's one of a kind, remember Amelia Bedelia is filled with thousands of beads and stones. And with my passion for design, I can create something that's perfect for you. Amelia Bedelia is 115 and a half South Main Street in downtown Hutchinson. Go Blue Dragons! This is Kelly, owner of Brick House Boutique. Don't pack away your summer pieces just yet. It may still be warm, yet summer to fall fashions are here at Brick House Boutique. Comfortable and affordable casual clothes. At 117 South Main in Hutchinson, Big City Chic in a downtown boutique. And we might be in for one of those good old shootouts. Already three touchdowns put up, and we have played less than 10 minutes of this football game. Thought it might be a little bit of a defensive battle, but not the case. You really got to give props to Rico Nix on that huge touchdown play. He was the guy that sealed the edge from the line of scrimmage. Ball taken in the end zone. They're going to bring it out. Might be a mistake. We'll see. A nice run back. Managing to get out to the 20-yard line, maybe the 21 or 22-yard line. For the Independence Pirates, it was Marquise King. Figured it was worth the gamble. Took it three yards deep in the end zone. Hesitated. Thought he was going to take a knee. And then he said, I'm going to bring it out. Could have had it at the 25. Got to the 22. Yeah, I think that's one thing, especially with the rule change, you really got to talk to your players about. I mean, if you think you have that big play ability on a kickoff to take it like a Cordero Patterson, then by all means take it. But if not, you can even fair catch at this point inside the 25 and get it at the 25-yard line. I suspect Jason Brown is okay with Marquise King making that play because he does have big play potential. We saw that with his two big catches on their touchdown drive. Hildreth starts. Fake handle, throws it over the middle, and it is caught for a very short gain at about the 24, maybe the 25-yard line. Well covered by the Blue Dragons. 
They threw to the interior to the tight end. That was Bryson Cannon that pulled it in, his second grab of the game. Pickup of three, second down seven at the 25. Hildreth, left-handed youngster, hands it off, and the Dragons give up about three or four yards to a hard running low to the ground carry by Cunningham. So it is a third down and still the better part of four yards to go in a game that has not yet seen a punt. Hildreth, again, in the shotgun. Takes the snap, takes the handoff, loads it up, throws it over the middle, broken up. Broken up, nice defensive play by the Blue Dragons. It was Caleb Bright that got in there to knock the ball loose. Caleb got the wrong side of that one. He There was a big collision, knocked the ball away, and he's slow getting up, guys. And it's fourth down for the Pirates. Nice job defensively after Indy was able to score at, at ease with two plays in the last possession. Dragons will come out and look at the injured teammate on the sideline. There's going to be a break in the action here while they tend to the injured Blue Dragon. And while they do that, we'll take a 30-second break. HCC Sports is brought to you by the Sportscaster Club members, Portfolio Recovery Associates, Dr. Robert Epp of the Hutchinson Clinic, Barkley Plumbing, Burning Chiropractic Center, Tim and Gina Ritter, along with Brian Strange of the Green Vision Group, Sutton Kaufman Transmission Service, Wade Patton Insurance, A&A Builders, Bold Office Shares, Mega Manufacturing, MAYB, Mid-America Youth Basketball, Low Corporation, and by Man, Wyatt, and Rice, LLC. These Sportscaster Club members help provide funds for HCC scholarships. Adam Berry is the putter, and he gets off a dandy, gets a roll. Dragons get out of the way. Don't try to return it. The ball winds up down at the Hutchinson 25-yard line. Effective punt. But the Blue Dragons, more importantly, get the ball back, leading 14-7. to They have scored on each of their first two possessions. This offense has been pretty hot, and a lot of it comes from that blocking up front, not only by the interior linemen, but with those tight ends getting in on the action and sealing the edges. See what the Dragons can do on possession number three. These teams played a battle here a year ago, a game that didn't start until 10 o'clock because of Niwala. Dragons lost that one 24 to 19. They threaten blitz, and the run is off to the left side. And there's not a whole lot of gain on the carry. Dragons kind of ran into the area from which the pressure was coming, and it's a pickup of only a yard. Jonathan White seeing some action here. He averages two yards per carry last week. I asked him earlier in the season, you want to go by John? He said, yeah. As he walked away, he goes, oh, wait, what's this for? He goes, no, 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 you better, better go by Jonathan. <laughs> Second down nine at the... 26-yard line. Dragons almost draw them off sides. Quarterback Shucker shaked out of the pocket, throws it out in the flat, and the ball bounces off the ground, and I, it popped high in the air. Did a receiver, a receiver had his hands underneath it for Hutchinson, then it bounced straight up in the air when he hit the ground, and it is intercepted for Independence Boy, I tell you once what, again. It looked like me. I'm standing way down with Coach Gooch. It looked to me like it hit the ground. And it popped up and then went off his hand and was caught. So they're going to talk about it because I'm not sure that one should stand. Yeah, we're a long way away, but it looked like the ball got between the hands of Kareem Brown and bounced off the turf, and that is the ruling. Yeah. They've called it now incomplete. That's the right call. We're up here in the box and we could see that, Rusty. Yeah. Ben Hutch thought he had an interception. The only way it w could have been an interception would have been if the Dragon receiver had both hands underneath the football and somehow it bounced straight up in the air. Much more likely that happened because the ball hit the ground. Yeah, but as the defense, that's the appropriate reaction. At least try to sell it, and the Pirates almost did. So it is a third down and very long for Hutchinson. Third down nine at the 26-yard line. Dragons need a big play right here, or they'll be punting. And they'll go with the run. Jonathan White takes what he can, which is not a lot, a couple of yards out to the 28, maybe the 29-yard line. And the Dragons will call on the punter 
to get them out of this end of the field. Hutchinson leading at 14-7, three and a half minutes to play, period number one. Rusty Hills, Darren Dunn, and Glenn Grunwald with you on Eagle Radio Sports. Five-yard penalty on the, on the uh, down on the offsides against Indy guys, so... Thank you, Glenn. Didn't see the flag. That gives the Dragons third down all over again. And the punter will wait for at least one more play. Quick throw over the middle. It's caught in the middle of the field at the 40 and out to the 45, 46, 47-yard line. Quick toss caught by Marquise Whitmire. Move the chains. He's one of those sneaky five foot eight guys in the slot that can get away from you. Yeah, he does stuff well after he catches the football, and that was a good example right there. First and 10 now in the 46. Right over the middle. And the Blue Dragons bailed out by the penalty on the Pirates. Managed to sustain the drive. Shucker takes the snap, stays in the pocket, tries to get it out to Irwin on the left side. He was getting a lot of pressure, threw it a little bit quick, threw it into the ground. Second down and 10. White is the running back. Dragons have done a lot of running of the football, but on this drive primarily through the air. Second down, 10 at the Hutchinson 46-yard line. Dragons by a touchdown and an extra point. Dragons fake the end around, give up the middle, and White pounds across the 50 to the 49-yard line. Nicely conceived play with a motion coming from the right side. And White moves right up the middle for five. Third down, long five for the Dragons at the midfield stripe. Again, Hutchinson 14-7 over the number five nationally ranked Pirates of Independence. Shucker checks the pay the playlist on his wrist. And this time they give it on the end around, and it is fooling nobody. Actually, not so much an end around as just a receiver coming around. A reverse. Khalil McLean doesn't get anything. It's fourth down, and now the Dragons will punt. Made one man miss in the backfield, but Tony Wallace was able to sneak by Jalik Jagway and was waiting for the runner to get there. Dragons gave the Pirates the same look on consecutive plays. Different results. Dragon punt from midfield. Dragon punter, Matt Jones. Averaged 30 last week on three tries. No pressure. Gets off a high kick. Angled for the left side. Dragons down there. It bounces out of bounds inside the 15-yard line. Put it down at the 12. Very effective punt. Matt Jones is fourth inside the 20 already this year. Yeah, we talked about him last week, but an interesting story. He was drafted by the Dodgers out of the Blue Dragons baseball program and was in the minors for about four years. Got a hold of Coach Schmidt, wanted to come back and had a year of eligibility left and wanted to do it on the football field. So the Pirate offense comes back out there. They don't have very good field position this time. I doubt that that has a whole lot of impact on the play selection. Chase Hildreth confident in his throwing ability. He already has a touchdown pass, as does his Dragon counterpart. Hildreth. Hands off. Dragons try to make a play. Back gets away from the initial tackle, able to get out to the 12 or the 13-yard line. Good job by the Blue Dragons of containing it there. Anthony Ramsey and others. Dante Chapman was carrying a few Dragons with him by the time he went down on that short run. It is a pickup of one. Hildreth on second down. Rolling to his left, flags fly, throws it out to the left side. It is caught. Dragons defend it well. It's taken out of bounds for a gain of four or five yeah. yards, but we'll check the flag. It's going to be uh, all sides on the Dragons, guys. He right in, jump, jumped. All right. Found Tyrone Taylor for the gain. They'll probably take the penalty because that will give them the down over. And the officials will step it off. 
And start at the 13, so we'll come out to the 18. It'll be second down all over again. Still about five yards needed for a first. First quarter of play, Garden 7, Don City 6. One minute to play in the first quarter in Independence. Hildreth claps his hands, takes a snap, quick throw out to the right side, threw it behind his intended receiver, and no chance whatsoever for the ball to be hauled in by Reuben Flowers. Again, it just seemed like they're on a different page. Quarterback thought he was going to break back on that back shoulder part of the throw sooner, and Flowers the third just wasn't going in the same direction. And I got a defensive player down, guys. Second time we've had. And it's for the second time, yep. it's Jermichael Neal. Cramping. And it's cramps. Well, I tell you what, we saw cramps galore last night in Wichita. It is hot. You know the coaches are harping about consuming a bunch of liquid. When yeah. you're a big man like Jamichael Neal, it takes a lot of liquid to make a difference. Well, and the, the walk we had up to that press box about gave me cramps a couple times, too. So The word copious comes to mind, and even though, as Glenn said, those copious amounts, when you're that big of a guy and that strong, it takes even more than just the average man. So it is a third down, yeah, between four and five yards to go for the Pirates, still inside their 20 at their own 18. Hildreth has been in the shotgun throughout the game. He is there right now with trips, or rather two wideouts to the right side of the field, one of whom switches sides. Hildreth looks, throws it over the middle. It's high. It's incomplete. Batted down at the line of scrimmage by Clarence Hicks. His 6-2 frame stretched it out, knocked it down. So now it is fourth down, and the Dragons figure to get pretty good field position out of this. I'm not saying he did it, but Neil had a smile on his face when he came off the field after this cramp. Maybe he was giving his defensive line a little bit of a breather legally. Dragons leading it 14-7, looking for field position here. Punt is off, and it's kind of shanked off the, to the side. Dragons will get out of the way, and it bounds out of bounds. On the Indy side of the 50, they'll line it up and put it down at the 48. Dragons will have it there. 40 ticks left first quarter. Hutchinson 14, Indy 7. Boy, an opportunity. A two-touchdown advantage in this game would be a huge advantage. Dragon defense gave up a couple of big pass plays on the Indy scoring drive, but for the most part has contain the Pirate offense. Yeah, the blocking is, has gone well so far for the Blue Dragons. Glad to see Aaron Collins in there again. Want to see what this kid can do. Well, he has run and run and run, mainly on the edges. He won't get a choice here. Quarterback pulls it out, throws downfield. Got him. Wide open at the 20, at the 10, and down to the three-yard line goes Khalil McClain. He was as wide open as you could get. Must have had 15 yards on the nearest player. The ball was a little bit underthrown, or that would have been a touchdown. What a beautiful fake. Faked out the entire stands, and the Pirate defense, Keon Holder, so mad at himself that he let McLean get by him. So now the Blue Dragons in business. They'll put it down, looks like, closer to the four-yard line. First and goal, Hutchinson. Aaron Collins is the running back. He'll get his chance. Gives it to Collins, and Collins grabbed. No gain. Might have lost half a yard. And that's the final play of the first quarter. First quarter comes to a close with Hutchinson leading Independence 14-7. The Dragons will be second in goal from the five of the Pirates when we start the second quarter in 60 seconds. This is Carter File, President of Hutchinson Community College. The proud tradition of Blue Dragon Athletics continues this fall. I encourage you to take advantage of the Blue Dragon All Sports Ticket. For just $60 for adults and $40 for K-8 through students, you can enjoy over 50 athletic events at Hutchinson Community College. These are general admission tickets that include football, volleyball, men's and women's basketball, baseball, and other selected events. Get yours today at the Sports Arena or at Area Dillon Stores. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and keep current with all Blue Dragon Athletic news and events at bluedragonsports.com. 
Vehicles are getting pretty smart these days with semi-automatic control features that make driving easier. But riding an RCAT vehicle is easier yet. You don't have to do a thing. Just stand along the route, wave your hand at the driver, and hop on. RCAT is first come, first serve general public transportation that travels throughout Hutchinson and South Hutchinson hourly on weekdays from 6 a.m. to 7 p.m. and on Saturday from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. Call 694-2913 for further information. Well, gentlemen, a pretty impressive first quarter for the Blue Dragons, who lead by seven. Had just one conversion on third down in the opening game against Ellsworth. Already two for four on third down conversions for the Blue Dragons. Let's see where they put the ball down. Looks like they're going to set it more like the seven-yard line. So a loss of two by Collins on that first down run. Second and goal from the seven. Hutchinson 14-7 over the Pirates. Looking for more. Mason Shucker. Hands off and nothing doing. Collins is dumped back at the 10. So the Pirates not fooled this time by the running of Desmond Collins, grabbing before he can get underway. And after a great play down to the five-yard line, Hutchinson in danger of having to settle for a field goal try. John Mitchell able to penetrate the line and stop that run before it even started. All right. It is third and goal from the 10. Hutchinson has not attempted a field goal this season. Mason Shucker with Collins on his left hip. Back to throw. Pressure come. Steps up. And as he throws, he it is hit. His arm clearly went forward. This will be an incomplete pass. Well, they're originally right now ruling it as a fumble that Aaron Collins recovered at the 20. I thought I clearly saw his shoulder moving forward. That's not the case. And the Blue Dragons have lost 15 yards on three plays, which makes this a much more challenging field goal for Sebastian Garcia. They'll put it down at the 27th, a head-on 37-yard attempt to put the Dragons up by 10. Kick is up. It has length. And it is down central. Hutchinson 17, Independence 7. 13-37 to play in the first half. Each team gets something out of that. The Blue Dragons get three points to move up 10, but the Pirates are able to keep Hutchinson out of the end zone. Dragons kick off in half a minute. Just as the Hutchinson Blue Dragons athletics are a tradition, so is the Anchor Inn in downtown Hutchinson. Whether you plan lunch or dinner or even take out for home, the Anchor Inn is a great family restaurant that you are sure to enjoy. Order off the great menu or take advantage of the Anchor Inn's awesome buffet. You'll make a great choice either way. The Anchor Inn is also a great spot to meet up with old friends and acquaintances because everyone goes to the Anchor. That's the Anchor Inn at 128 South Main in Hutchinson, proud supporters of Hutchinson Blue Dragon Athletics. Well, the Dragons not particularly pretty, guys, after the pass play to Khalil McLean. Set them up with first and goal at the five, but they do get three out of it. After being that close, you really want to come away with six, and fortunate at that point to come away with the three. You know, the 35 yards and beyond have been shaky for Blue Dragon kickers in the past. Garcia, though, no problem from 37. Has a little bit of a groin injury. Doesn't practice kicking as much as he'd like to. Dragon kick is deep, taking it to three-yard line. Right out to the 10, to the 15, to the 20, and to the 25 on the bring back for the Independence Pirates. Number six offensively, that is Matthew Wilcox. Young man out of Dayton, Ohio, sets him up in pretty good field position. Just one kick return last week for Wilcox out at Dodge City. Already two here tonight. Got out to the 25-yard line, and the Pirates will start there, trailing by 10. Hutchinson scored first. Pirates answered. Hutchinson scored again, and then added a field goal. That's where we are at 17-7. Hildreth. Long count, and now... Officials come in. And delay a game. And too yeah, much time. Delay a game, guys. Too much time. Halftime. Nickel State's 10. KU 10. 
Well, you talk about a program that needs a win. Kansas just has to get that one. I don't even know if I can talk about it. I was there when it got to its worst possible place it could be, and it just hasn't come back up yet. First down and 15 now. Hildreth hands off, and the Dragons make a play in the backfield. There is nowhere whatsoever for the ball carrier to go. I mean, absolutely nothing. And Corinthian Cunningham loses, uh, let's call it a couple, let's call it more like six or seven. Yeah, Monty Montgomery came in, stood him up, brought him right down. Nice job. Actually, a loss on the play of two coupled with a five-yard penalty sets us up with second down, 17. Hildreth loads it up, throws out to the right, and it's on the bounce, so it is incomplete. It'll be third down and a whole lot. Rusty, we're telling Darren a little bit about the history of this wonderful stadium. Years and years ago, one of the first night games in semi-pro baseball was under the lights was played here, and Mickey Mantle played here. I used to be able to walk out on that football field in the grass, Darren, would I couldn't see my shoes. Yep. They, they would grow up long and slow you down. All right, big play for both teams. Pirates in each 17, Dragons looking for another stop. Hildreth back to throw. Pressure comes. Unloads it over the middle. Andy, it is. Intercepted by the Blue Dragons if it stands at the 30-yard line. That is another pick. What is that, guys? Is that four picks now for the Dragons secondary or five? That's five. Josh Relaford just got his second of the year. Excuse me, his first of the year. So the Blue Dragons at the Pirate 30 with an opportunity to make a statement right here. Relaford had a break, broken up pass last week, and finally gets his hands completely on one here, and that could not have gotten closer to the turf when he dove down to get it. Leading 17-7. Wonderful field position. Two running backs back there by the Hutchinson quarterback. And it is the Hutchinson quarterback keeping, and he goes nowhere. Grabbed immediately and down right at the 30-yard line. The Pirate defense has definitely stiffened. Dragons had a lot of success running the ball early in the game around the edges. They've kind of abandoned that. They're really sealing well and keeping blocks on the inside of the shoulder pads, and now we're seeing that defensive line break through into the backfield. Second down and 10. Would be a shame not to come up with something after an interception at the opposition 30. Dragons fake the reverse. Quarterback throws, and it is broken up. Uh, getting a hand on it at the last minute for the Independence Pirates was Whitmire, and he is probably the reason the Dragons aren't celebrating a touchdown or at least a first down. Yeah, Shucker nearly threw it right back. Davis was right there in that passing lane to knock it away. Third down and 10. Boy, the Pirate defense has been terrific down deep in their territory. Dragons still at the 30. Probably two more downs, I'm going to guess, from this position. 12 minutes to go in the game, 17-7 Hutch. Play action. The ball floated downfield. Dragons have a receiver back there. Caught, oh no, dropped, broken up at the last minute. Caught the Dragons had been able to get it to Sifa Smith in the corner of the end zone. At the last minute, the defensive back reaches in, knocks it free. Severely underthrown, but Smith still had a shot at it. Now the Dragons will try a really long field goal. This one they'll put down head on at the 38-yard line, 48-yard field goal against what breeze there is. It would be a school record if successful. And before the field goal. Yeah, they're going to think about timeout, guys. All right, we'll take a break, too. Back in half a minute, Dragons leading at 17-7, looking at a potential field goal try iPhone fans, listen up. Next Tech Wireless is launching an amazing new deal. Get four new iPhones with unlimited data for less than $40 per line. You heard us right. That price includes the phones and unlimited data. Next Tech Wireless has more than 50 store locations to serve you. So stop by and get your four iPhones with unlimited data for less than $40 per month per line. Certain restrictions apply. Phone guard required and not included in price. Get your four new iPhones today at Next Tech Wireless.
Well, we are certainly happy to have you with us on Country 102.9. Uh, KWBW will be carrying a lot of Blue Dragon football and basketball broadcasts, but tonight they're with the Kansas City Royals. Fourth down 10, and in, now they'll go for it instead of trying the field goal. Would have been a long one, 48 yards against the little breeze. Dragons might try to draw them offside. Almost do. Now Hutchinson will take a timeout. The attempt there was to draw them off sides, move the ball five yards closer, and get a field goal try from there. Independence guys not biting. Yeah, I worry about the line drive of it where they could get a hand on it and block it and have really good field position, maybe even return it. I think you might have to punt this one for a corner. Well, we'll see. I see Sebastian Garcia coming out, and if they do kick this, this will show you how much confidence Ryan Rhodes has in Sebastian Garcia because in the years I've been here, the last five, He's not had this much confidence in any given kicker to even attempt a shot from out here this early in the game. School record if successful. The holder is Marquise Whitmire. Official marks the ball ready for play. And here we go. There's the snap. It's fine. They get it down. The kick is up. The kick is going to be short. It will go into the end zone. And the Blue Dragons are turned away after the Pirate turnover. It remains 17-7, 12 minutes to play in the first half. And that time, the Hutchinson kicker, Sebastian Garcia, didn't get all of it. I like the fact that they went for it, though, just giving him an opportunity kind of lets you gauge where the special teams are when it comes to kicking those field goals. And in the college game on the miss, the ball comes back to the line of scrimmage. That was the 30. So it is there that the Pirates get it. And Independence has been saddled so far in the first yeah, half yeah. with not real good field position. A new quarterback, guys, and, and uh, Wright in there, Antoine Wright. All right, Antoine Wright, the quarterback. Thank you, Glenn. Big, tall kid. Takes the snap, hands off. Dragons make a play in the backfield. Nowhere whatsoever for the running back, and that is Corinthian Cunningham to go. Say hello to Caleb Bryce again in the backfield. Antoine Wright is a 6'5", 200-pounder out of Miami, Florida. This is the third quarterback used by Coach Brown in two games this year. Second down, 10. At the 30 of the Pirates. Right. Hands off. And the Dragons stop it after a short gain. A couple of yards for, once again, Corinthian Cunningham. Third down, 8. We heard from Tremel Walthour early in this game. Had some pressure on the quarterback, Hildreth. Here, he's able to slow Cunningham down right at the line of scrimmage. Another big play for the Hutchinson defense that, save for a couple of long pass plays, has been pretty doggone good here in the first half. Wright has one wide out to the right, slot back on that side. Now they move a man to the left side of the formation. Five on the shot clock. Wright drops back, wants to throw, sets it up. Pressure comes. Flushed out of the pocket. He runs to the side. And Dragons will corral him way short of the first down. Clarence Hicks, the first man on the scene. So it will become another punting situation. Guys, this Blue Dragon defense is solid. And they're playing well tonight. A little gentle tap out of bounds right there. Took him all the way just about to the chain link fence. But referees got over there quickly. No altercation. So let's see what happens here on the return. Punting the football will be Indy. And for the Blue Dragons, it is Marquise Whitmire that awaits. Punt is a good one. Over Whitmire's head. Fields it over his shoulder. Back at the 20. Starts back. Giving ground. Gets to the outside. To the 25. To the 30. And is run out of bounds at the 37, 38 yard line. Defensive player went to cut his legs out from under him. He dove over that to avoid what could have potentially been 
a tough tackle. And Hutchinson will have, once again, good field position, leading 17-7, 10 minutes remaining in the first half. Looked like he was dead to rights at the beginning of that return with four guys right on him, but he was able to run to the outside of those players. And DeMarie Givens, the Pirate crowd wanted to hold on him, but he really helped seal that outside. See if the Blue Dragons can move it here. They've had outstanding field position last two times. Offense hasn't done much. High snap. Dragons lucky they get it to Desmond Jackson, and he has hauled down for a big loss. That was a great job by quarterback Mason Shucker of handling a ball that was snapped way above his head. Yeah, we saw those problems a lot last year, so to be able to corral that <laughs> couldn't be any any more of a blessing. Man, if that had gotten by him, it would have been Indy football inside the 20. As it is, the Dragons look at a second down and about 19. Shucker. Takes the snap, takes the handoff, rolling to the side, pumps once, now throws middle of the field. It could be intercepted. It is dropped. That was a throw that should not have been made, should have been intercepted at the 42-yard line of the Pirates, but they can't haul it in. Hutchinson avoids a turnover. McNary and Garland were closing in on it at the same time, and each one thought they had a clear path to it and effectively knocked it away from one another. I think they were so surprised it was coming their way is what part of it was, so good thing that was incomplete. A ball that should never have been thrown. There was not an offensive man within seven or eight steps of the throw. Third down a whole lot. And the Pirates want to spend a timeout, so we'll break to 9.17 to go. First half remains, and we'll be back in. Yeah, let's make it half a minute. Hi, Brian Bobo, General Manager at Midwest Superstores. It's a holiday weekend, and we're going to celebrate, but only for a short time. We will only be open from 10 to 4 on Labor Day. And we are having our penny over sale. That's right, a penny over on all new Ford and Toyotas. We didn't forget about pre-owned. We have reduced prices on all of our inventory. Remember, you only have a short time, so come see us on Labor Day from 10 to 4 or visit us online at MidwestSuperstores.com. Welcome back into Independence, where the Blue Dragons have the early 17-7 lead over the number five Independence Pirates. 9-17 left before the half. It started out like a shootout, and now it has turned into a defensive battle. Right now, both teams' defense is playing very, very well. Hutchinson has had the field position advantage throughout the first half. That, as much as anything, is the reason for the Dragon 10-point lead. Dragons with a third down. And about 18 at their own 32-yard line. Ball thrown up for grabs. Irwin fights for it, hauls it in. Did he make the catch? He did. An unbelievable grab inside the 40-yard line. Went up with a defensive back and just simply wrestled it away. That ball was on the back two of Tony Wallace, and Irwin reached over the top of his helmet grabbed it from the backside and pulled it back over Wallace's head. Yeah. What a play by Jalen Irwin. It was nice, and if you want to see it, go to BlueDragonSports.com and go to the schedules, click on the video, and watch the ball game from there and listen to our audio. That was a heck of a catch. All of a sudden, the Dragons at the 38 of the Pirates with a first down. Dragons pound up the middle and run it hard, breaking to the outside and down to the 23-yard line. Jonathan White, first down, Dragons. His biggest run of the season. Dragons using a lot of running backs, a lot of players, and right now Hutchinson trying to score a touchdown that would give them a 17-point bulge. Dragons taking their time. First down at the 23 of the Pirates. Eight minutes and change left in the first half. Dragons go back to the run, and off to the left side goes White. White carrying people with him inside the 15, down to about the 12-yard line. Another first down, Hutchinson, I believe. Yep, he got 11, 
and the Dragons moving the chains. Back-to-back -back big runs for White, his two longest of the season. He's just lowering his head back behind the blockers and just driving forward. Mason Shucker directing the offense. He's done a dandy job of it. See what the Dragons can get out of this. Flags fly. Dragons floated in the end zone. It is caught for a touchdown. I, Check the flags. I think the catch a, was Khalil McClain. I think it's a free play, guys, unless there's was drawn. We'll see. Officials will confer. Right now it's a Dragon touchdown, and the officials were going to tell us that it is... On the defense, declined Hutchinson touchdown. Dragons lead at 23-7. Nice throw, nice catch by Khalil McClain in the right-hand half of the end zone. Yeah, almost as nice as a grab as Irwin had to start this drive on that long third down. And now the extra point try to make it 24-7. It's off to the left and wide left. So it is a 16-point Hutchinson lead, 7.38 to go in the first half. More football, just half a minute away. Most of us dream of retiring and having financial security. Do you have a plan? This is Jay Pitzer with Strategic Financial Concept. Our mission is to help create and maintain wealth for our clients through effective risk and asset management. I'd love to sit down with you and show you how we can help you keep more of your hard-earned money over your lifetime. Call 960-0749 for a cup of coffee and for the best one-on-one -on -one conversation you've ever had with an advisor. Securities offered through the ON Equity Sales Company, member FINRA, SIPC, Investment Advisory Services, is offered through Owen Investment Management Company. Well, we trust you are enjoying this 23 to 7 football game. You're listening to it on Country 102.9 in Hutchinson, Kansas. It is 8 o'clock, and the last hour, guys, has pretty much belonged to the Blue Dragons. You wondered what Shucker's passing game was going to be like after not having much success in the opening game with one interception. Already two touchdowns thrown today. Dragons looking sharp. Long ways to go in this football game and a dangerous team in the Independence Pirates. Hutchinson kickoff coming from the 35-yard line. Don't expect anything fancy here. It's short, though. Not deep at all. And it is up for grabs and fielded at the 28-yard line. But the player fielding it was seated on the turf, so he can't get up and run with it. And it is going to be the Independence Pirates with their most important possession of the first half. They had this game tied at seven, but it's been all dragon since then. This drive will start at the 28-yard line with 7.36 to go in the first half. Hildreth coming back in at quarterback. Yes, he will. And wide outs to the left and right. They need a big play to get them out of this end of the field, and Hildreth is capable of making it happen. Gives on the run, and it is going to be a pickup of four or five yards for Corinthian Cunningham. Quick uh, score of guys at halftime from Manhattan. It's South Dakota 24, K-State 12. Wow. That's a surprise. It'll be second down and six for the Pirates at their own 32-yard line. Clock moving down toward the seven-minute mark of the second quarter. Hildreth, play action, throws it short, and it's just out of the reach of his intended receiver. Getting a hand on it but not able to pull it in was Bryson Cannon, and it'll be third down and six. Just a bad location. Yeah, it really was, and good job by the defensive end for the Blue Dragons to get his hands up and have to alter that throw a little bit. Another defensive uh, lineman down for the Blue Dragons. Bryson Cannon was headed for the sidelines on that out route, and instead of hitting his outside shoulder, Hildreth brought it back into the field of play, and that's a tough spot to try and turn around and grab while you're running toward the sideline. The Hutchinson player injured appears to be Anthony Ramsey. Dragons send to him. While they do that, we'll take a 30-second timeout. It's football season. When the weather is warm one day and cold the next, stay ahead of cold and flu season by drinking plenty of liquids, getting enough rest, and keeping your hands sanitized. Come see the friendly folks at Ashcraft Pharmacy, your locally owned Health Mart Pharmacy, for over-the-counter medications to help alleviate symptoms. And if you need a prescription, we offer free mail-out, free delivery, or call ahead for our handy curbside service. Go Dragons! 
from Ashcraft Pharmacy in the Heart Shopping Center, South Hutchinson, and Health Mart, caring for you and about you. Ramsey, a big kid, able to get up and mobile off the field under his own power. He's a 332-pounder from Fitzgerald, Georgia. Third down six at the 32 of the Pirates. Dragons thinking about a blitz. Hildreth has time, stays in the pocket, floats it downfield. This one is out of the reach of everybody, and coming out of it, Gimpy is the man for whom the pass was intended. That might be the biggest of all. That is Marquise King, outstanding receiver. He comes down. I think he's going to be all right, but he is he's a little gimpy on that ankle. Yeah, he had the touchdown catch earlier. He had such a big week last week with 104 yards against Dodge City. No question he's a big part of not only the offense, but the special teams when it comes to returns. Fourth down and punt time once again. Bad punt. High, high snap. It's rolling down inside the five. And that's going to be partly a, kicked out of the yeah. back end of the end zone by the punter. That'll be a dragon safety. Yeah, it will be. It'll be a safety. He, he, uh, the, the indie punter kicked it out of bounds. That's the old play you see on the NFL blooper reel where the Tampa Bay Buccaneer punter tries to kick it out of bounds and he misses it. As the punter in that situation, Adam Barry, you want to make sure that thing gets out and that you hit it with the swing of the foot. Safety. And the Blue Dragons, who just missed an extra point to get two on the safety, they'd have rather had the football. It would have been down inside the five-yard line. Smart play by the punter for the Independence Pirates, Adam Berry. But the Blue, they haven't put the points on the scoreboard yet. I'm not, not yet, sure but, why. But the way the Blue Dragon defensive player reacted. They're going to put the ball down at about the one-yard yes, line. Yes, they are. They're, They're going to say it right down there. there. That might work out better anyway. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I like the Dragons' chances from here. Why wasn't that? I'm not sure what they ruled. I thought when he kicked it out the back of the end zone, it would have been a safe. Possibly might have been touched by a Blue Dragon. I'm not positive. At any rate, it will be Hutchinson's football at the one-yard line of the Pirates. They'll assess him with that illegal touch with the foot since it was in the field of play. They'll mark it there rather than giving them the safety. All right. So the Blue Dragons will be first and goal at the one. The running back, Aaron Collins. Pirates have been tough defensively down here. Quarterback continues to be Mason Shucker. Stands five yards deep. Takes the snap, hands off, and it's an easy dragon touchdown as Collins started into the pile, reverse direction to the left. And the Blue Dragons lead the Independence Pirates 29-7 to with an extra point coming. Wow. What a half of football. Probably one of the better halves of football we've seen in a couple uh, of years, Rusty. Yeah, no question. Now the Dragons would like to add the extra point. Last one was missed. This one is up. This one looks good, and the officials verified that that is the case. And it is Hutchinson, 30. The Independence Pirates, 7. We'll take a break. Half a minute. Dragon kickoff coming up. Hutchinson in control, at least at the moment. HCC Sports is brought to you by the Sportscaster Club members, Portfolio Recovery Associates, Dr. Robert F. of the Hutchinson Clinic, Barkley Plumbing, Burning Chiropractic Center, Tim and Gina Ritter, along with Brian Strange of the Green Vision Group, Sutton Kaufman Transmission Service, Wade Patton Insurance, A&A Builders, Bold Office Shares, Mega Manufacturing, MAYB, Mid-America Youth Basketball, Low Incorporation, and by Man, Wyatt, and Rice, LLC. These Sportscaster Club members help provide funds for HCC scholarships. Well, the Blue Dragons a year ago gave up a couple of scores right before halftime. They certainly don't want to do that now because Hutchinson has been a dominant force in this football game. To this point, 647 remains. Dragons kick to the Pirates. And a big Pirate crowd hasn't had a whole lot to cheer about trying to get the Pirates riled up. A fair number of Dragon faithful across the way. They've enjoyed this. 
And the kickoff is very short again. High, short, taken by an up back at the 28-yard line, no return. Now they don't want to give up the big return, and right there was taken up by an up back or an up line person for the Independence Pirates. Good field position, though, about at 28. Austin King did not look comfortable bringing that in, and that was the situation the Pirates got in on the last kickoff, a really dangerous part of the field for them. And again, Glenn's comments down on the sideline brought to you by Jackson Meat, one of Hutchinson's outstanding businesses. All right, here we go. Hildreth will try to make something happen. With the exception of the one touchdown drive. Now the Dragons come across, and was there movement? Boy, blowing across the line for the Blue Dragons <laughs> was big number 41. LT Eichner. LT thought he saw movement. I don't think the officials did. They did not. It's a five yard walk off. LT got his shot in, though. Yeah, I like that he kept with it just to see if the officials would let the play go. And at least for the moment, to have a sack. First down, five for the Pirates now at the 35 yard line. Looking for something good to happen. It hasn't of late. And they go with the run, and the Dragons grab up around the shoulder area, the running back. Again, it is Corinthian Cunningham, and again, he gets nothing. Second down and five at the 35-yard line. Now six and a half to play first half. Hutchinson 30, Independence 7. Independence ranked number five in the nation. Dragons unranked, trying to make a statement. Hildreth back to throw, has time, now flush, rolls to the left, ball thrown down deep as the flag flies, and it is incomplete. Yeah, we're going to have holding, I think, back here, guys. He will because Jaquan Nelson got held trying to get to the quarterback. Well, interesting situation. You probably take it because it will make it second down and 15, but it would be third down and five if you decline it. Six minutes, eight seconds left in the first half. Even though the ball got launched downfield after that holding call, I do like the coverage by Kelvin Clemens. So it's encouraging to see after DeMarie Givens got beat early in the game by Marquise King to see Clemens helping with that defense over the top. So the ball comes back to the 25-yard line where it is a second down and 15 for Indy. Again, Hutchinson, in the eyes of many, the underdog coming into this game. Not playing like an underdog, leading 30 to 7. Hildreth, quarterback, claps his hands, drop back. Dragons try to apply pressure, ball thrown out in the flat. Caught, caught at the 35 yard line, and still on his feet, dancing around, trying to make a big play, and getting all the way out to nearly the 50 yard line. That's Marquell Odom, first big play he's made in the game, and he is a potential game breaker. It's these types of momentum plays you can't let the Pirates build, especially when you have a nice lead like the Dragons do. Ball actually at the 49-yard line of the Pirates. Still a lot of time left in the first half. 540 to go till the halftime break. Hildreth throws over the middle, and it is caught again. Immediately brought down by the Dragon defender, but perfectly thrown. Put right in the hands of Kareem Brown. Couldn't have been defended a whole lot better, but it's down to the 35-yard line of Hutch. 16 yards on the throw over the middle. And now it's the Dragons that will take a break. Five and a half to halftime. 30-7 to seven Hutch. But the Pirate, the Pirate ship is on the seas. We'll be back with more in half a minute. For over 15 years, Erickson Custom Building has designed, built, and remodeled homes and commercial projects in central Kansas. Whether you're looking to replace a deck, wanting to build an addition, or remodel your kitchen, our customers receive individualized attention, quality craftsmanship, and exceptional customer service from start to finish. Erickson Custom Building offers new construction and remodeling services in addition to commercial and insurance projects. Visit our website today at ericksoncustombldg.com. Well, when they had to, when the deficit got to 23 at 30 to 7, the Pirates have come up with a couple of big plays on a couple of really good throws by Chase Hildreth. 
And the Blue Dragons now defending the final 35 yards of football field that remains between the Pirates and their goal line objective. First down at the 35. Hildreth all by himself. Tries to get the Dragons to jump. They try to get to the edge and a nice cutback, a nice move and down to the 20 down to the 19 yard line goes Corinthian Cunningham. Looks like he was going to be hauled down at the 25, uh, that's at the 29 yard line, not the 19. Made a nice cut back at the 35 and got about five or six extra yards out of it. He planted that foot in the ground and got by Caleb Bryce, who had over pursued at that point. So it is second down and three. Hildreth, that's a new quarterback. Now they pitch to. Cunningham and Cunningham grabbed in the backfield. That time a direct snap to Hildreth deep, and Cunningham got the ball way behind the line of scrimmage. Strange play. Dragons stuff it out. Third down four. Clarence Hicks covered the quarterback and the running back on the same play, but lost his helmet, so he'll have to come out for a down. Third down four. Dragons trying to dig in. Hildreth back to throw. Sets up. Floats it out to the left, and it is broken up on an outstanding defensive play by Latavian Beaton at about the two-yard line. Beaton had two interceptions in game one. He made a couple of key tackles earlier on this drive with those long passing plays, and now really shines with that broken up pass. It is fourth down and four, and now it is the Pirates that will try a field goal. Ryan Redman. His longest field goal this season, 13 yards. This one would be 46. Not really reassuring, is it? Wind at his back, head on, and the Dragons don't want to jump offside here and give him a first down. Timeout Independence will break two. 438 to the break. Well, we're back in half a minute. The Hutch Medicine Shop and the Hutch Blue Dragons have a lot in common. In addition to our logos both being blue, all three pharmacists at the medicine shop graduated from HCC. Rick Stone in 1984, Brent Bauman in 2001, and Lacey Stone in 2007. In fact, the medicine shop has employed over a dozen HCC students over the past 15 years who are now Kansas pharmacists. The medicine shop and the Blue Dragons working together as one team. Well, again, Redmond stats. He's the field goal kicker for the Pirates. He's one of two on field goals. That was a 13-yarder. Six out of six on extra points. But this would be 46 yards. What little wind there is, Glenn, at his back. Yeah, it's, a, it's between three to eight miles per hour. I checked a little while ago because temperature was about 84, but it felt like 90. Now it's, it can get up there, but if you look at the flags, the flag that's kind of just jostling over there at half staff. They're sending back in the yeah. quarterback. Now they're going to go for it on fourth and four. Crowd try to draw them. They'll try to draw Hutch offside. I don't think the Dragons will bite. Hildreth, long count. Still barking, still barking, takes the snap, drops back, has time, now chased, flush, throws it into traffic, and it is broken up, and the Blue Dragons will get the football back, still leading 30-7, to another terrific job by the Dragon defenders. Yes, who, let's have you beaten another time. So the Blue Dragons have the ball back, they have time to do more damage by halftime. Beaton's made a couple of great plays here in the last three or four minutes of this game. Hicks has been providing pressure as well by breaking through that line. Quarterback had to peel his shoulders back to the field of play to try to throw that pass to the lefty Hildreth. All right, let's see what the Dragons do with it. They start at the 29, their own 29-yard line, with a 30-7 to lead and four and a half minutes to work with. High snap, handoff, and that is Jackson. He's hauled down right at the line of scrimmage. Actually, hauled down about five yards behind the line of scrimmage. That play never had a chance. Cross sniffed that out from the beginning. Yeah, at the very least, the Dragons would like to take this four minutes down to somewhere inside three before giving the ball back to the Pirates. Again, Hutchinson leading 30 to 7.
Let's see what the Dragons dial up. They dial up the run. And it is Jackson trying to get to the edge on the left side, able to get the corner, and then he is belted. Whoa. Short gain, two, three yards. Glenn, he took a shot. Yes, he did. Both of them took a shot. Both of them with a the little macho stare down at each other. But I'm, <laughs> yeah, I'm standing right over right where it was, and it was a shot. The Dragons keep the clock moving. It is on the march at 325 to go. Dragons really don't have to snap it until about three minutes remain. But they are doing nothing on this possession offensively. They have lost on two plays yeah, about seven yards. And Hutchinson not playing with any urgency, that's for sure. Play clock at five. Quarterback wants to throw. Now flushed, rolling to the left side, stay in bounds. Takes it out of bounds. Not sure why he did that. At about the 25-yard line, that freezes the clock at 2.53, and the wow. Dragons will punt. Coach went in the horse collar. Will Thacker and I are standing right over here, and that's what we saw. So, but they didn't throw the yellow. It looked like Jermaine Johnson got dangerously close, but if he doesn't actually yank down from the inside of those pads, they won't throw it. So the Dragons will have to punt. The Dragons haven't had to punt very much in this football game, and they will call on their punter, Matt Jones, to get him out of this end of the field. 2.42 left first half. That's a long time for a team that throws it. And the deep man, Marquell Odom, he's dangerous. Punts off. It's high. And it bounces backwards, down by the Dragons at the 40-yard line, getting downfield to down at Khalil McLean. Pirates start there, 227 left first half. Again, Hutchinson 30, Independence 7. They put it officially at the 41-yard line. And Marquise, excuse me, for the Independence Pirates, it'll be Chase Hildreth that will try to make something happen. And his arm is capable of doing that. He has some outstanding receivers, but the Dragon defenders have been solid in the first half. Gave up two long pass plays in a three-play 75-yard scoring drive for the Pirates, and that is it. All right, we're ready to go. Dragon secondary has already had one pick. Hildreth taking a long time. Now ready. Takes the snap. Throws quickly over there. Pops up in the air. Intercepted by the Dragons. And then shoveled backwards. And down the sideline go the Dragons. And this will be a Dragon touchdown. The interception. And then the quick pitch back. The quick pitch back to Kelvin Clemens. And the Dragons. A great defensive play. And an outstanding touchdown. Oh, boy. Oh, boy, was that one heck of a play. Monty Montgomery has to be really pleased with himself. He knew the moment he turned around and pitched it to Clemens that Clemens was going 30 yards to pay dirt. Well, wow. I'll tell you what, that was a heck of a play. There's a flag because of Sessu celebration, but deservingly so in my book. <laughs> wow. How good has this Blue Dragon defense been here? in the first half. Yeah, great call, Rusty, on that one. Great call. That's one of the, that's one of the darndest plays I've ever seen. Well, it was by design, and I mean it was beautiful. All the action right down the sideline on the right side. I think he saw that he was going to go down as he spun around, just got the pitch right to the the defensive, the offensive player, defensive player coming up the sideline. Heck of a play. And they're going to assess the penalty for celebration, evidently, on the kickoff because the extra point will come from the normal spot. This to make it a 30-point Hutchinson lead. Snap comes back. Hold is good. The kick is also good. Hutchinson, 37. The Independence Pirates, 7. And one of the biggest crowds we've ever seen in this stadium, it is hushed at the moment. More football in 30 seconds. Just when you thought you were done with taxes, you got a letter from the IRS. Maybe you're being audited or maybe you filed for an extension and still need some tax help. We at h Block are there for you. We don't stop working on April 15th. 
Our tax professionals are here to help you year-round. So if you have tax issues you need a hand with, even if H&R Block didn't do your taxes the first time around, visit our offices in Hutchinson, Lyons, or Ellsworth and let our experienced tax professionals help get you every dollar you deserve. The Dragon penalty for excessive celebration will be assessed on the kickoff, which means that the kickoff will come from the 20-yard line instead of the 35. Certainly the best half of football thus far that I can remember for the Blue Dragons in a long, long while. And I emphasize on both sides of the football, offensively and defensively. <laughs> oh, the ball falls off the kicking tee as Hutchinson approaches Steve McLean, almost breaking me up. He says, don't forget Resolution Prep Academy. <laughs> Steve McLean. You Steve McLean. Steve McLean. Well, you deserve it after that comment. <laughs> hey, I talked to Sebastian Garcia about about how his groin was and how what's his range when he's healthy. He says 50 to 60. He said he said the missed field goal really was still in his head because of the missed point after kick taken at the 40 at the 38 yard line on a fair catch. Sorry about that, <laughs> Mr. Carpenter. If you, if you were Steve McLean, you'd be sitting over there. And your left leg would be bouncing up and down. We are happy to have Steve Carpenter, the SID of Hutchinson Community College, for a lot of reasons here. But what a sad attempt at humor to pick on Resolution Prep Academy. By the way, the Dragons will play Resolution Prep again this year. Last year, that one was 91 nothing. All right, first down for the Independence Pirates at their 39-yard line. They have been staggered. And it's going to be a run. And <laughs> well, I'm going to tell you what, Corinthian Cunningham is just been hammered. Dragons in the backfield the almost late, immediately. The late handoff, but Latrell Bankston and Jaquan Nelson were not fooled. I'm kind of surprised because really they're going to have to redo the whole game plan. It's trailing by 30 right now, and we're a minute and 54 away from halftime. What we have seen is how good this Blue Dragon football team can be. Pilgrim. Takes the snap, has time now, comes out of the pocket to the left, throws up field, and it is caught. It is caught at the 45-yard line. It'll be a short gain, but it'll be a pickup of about 9 or 10 yards. And you have multiple penalties coming on this one. One in the area of possibly a hold, another in the area of a late hit on the quarterback. And the officials will sort things out and so far have not communicated their pleasure with us there's your hold on the offense and there's your roughing the quarterback on the blue dragons so they'll offset all right and it wipes out a nine yard gain so that worked out well from a hutchinson standpoint minute 39 left first half Steve McLean, now there's a name from the past. Very successful coach at Hutchinson. He's gone to a lot of good coaching stints, still in the college. Yep, team. he's at the University of Illinois, Chicago. And you stopped by his office. I, I did, think, this summer. he's yet to call me, so. <laughs> well, tell him about the compliment I gave him. All right, here we go. Hildreth back, loads it up, throws it. Out of the reach of his intended receiver right over the middle. It'll be third down and a bunch with 94 seconds left in the first half. Even if that ball is hauled in by Roy Livingston, he had Monty Montgomery ready to be all up in his business. Third down, 14. A total domination of the first half by this Blue Dragon football team. Hutchins are leading 37-7. Hildreth awaits the snap, immediately rolling to his left. Throws it backwards. That goes out of bounds. That is that is not an incomplete pass. That is a fumble, and the ball goes out of bounds at about the 29-yard line. That will become the new line of scrimmage for the punt. Actually, believe it or not, he ruled it an incomplete pass. How can in it the be linesman's, incomplete? In the linesman's opinion, he said it went forward, but we all saw it 
go backward, but to the guy it counts for, he said incomplete. I'm going to tell you what. There is a man that needs a set of glasses. Holy cow. That might be the worst call I've seen in the Jayhawk Conference. I need to talk to him about the set of axes. And now they blow the punt dead. Holy cow. Delay the, game. The yeah, ball, ball, start. ball was thrown backwards at least three yards. Yep. I went down bounds. there, but I saw the angle of it. I mean, I don't think it's going to make a whole lot of difference. We're down to a minute and a half. They're going to have to punt the football away. But it clearly. Yeah, the only way it makes a difference is if it stays in the field of play and has a chance to be recovered by the defense. Yeah. Uh, but that is, as you mentioned, at least five to seven yards difference. All right. Punts off, and it's a good one. Fielded at the 32-yard line by Whitmire. Whitmire trying to create problems for the offense instead creates problems for himself as the return is a negative five yards. Hutchins will have it at the 30-yard line with a minute 18 to go and a 37-7 lead. I'm not really very conservative in my political leanings nor my football leanings, but I'd go conservative right here. And there are those of you that have uh, seen my tweets that know exactly what I'm talking about. All right, here we go. Dragons start at their own 30. Will they look for more, or will they be content to keep it on the ground and go into halftime up 30? Dragons show us three wideouts to the right side. I'd be shocked if they threw it. And they want to throw it. They throw it downfield, and it is 15 yards over everybody, but there is a flag dropped. Wow. I'm surprised. I thought you were going to be shocked, but you're just surprised? Well, at age 75, getting shocked is pretty dangerous. We'll save that for defibrillation later. <laughs> I think the Dragons might have had somebody downfield that shouldn't have been there. So it seems like the linemen thought the same thing, that they were going to have a run. And they took a shot for Jalen Irwin, but Pirates were the only two closest in the vicinity, and Harrison Wallace. Now run it three times, please, and go in at halftime up 30. Quarterback's all by himself. Well, we'll see. Now there's a running back back there with him. And it will be a run. And there's a nice hole. And about six or seven yards on the carry by the brand-new Blue Dragon running back. And for Hutchinson, number 19 is Drake Bolas, young man from Gray, Georgia. I think that's the first action he's seen this season. But the clock will continue to roll. Now at 48 seconds. Tremendous half of football for the Blue Dragons. Second down, eight. got to believe the Dragons are going to run it again. And Bolas taking what he can get, which isn't a lot. But he'll take the final seconds off the clock. And the Blue Dragons will go into halftime. At one point tied 7-7, they scored 30 straight points. And our halftime score, Hutchinson, 37, Independent 7. Hail to the Dragons, at least for the first half. Halftime from Independence starts in two minutes. The Rothy family name has always been connected to serving the Hutchinson community. And you can expect the same kind of high-quality service when you visit Rothy Family Flooring. They believe you deserve to be treated like family. So they've invested in their own talented and trustworthy installers to lay your floors. No outside contractors will ever knock on your door if Rothy works for you. Let them show you their expansive selection of name brand flooring and trust your home to the best. Rothy Family Flooring, 325 North Main, Hutchinson. Sure, 
There are lots of choices around for a primary care physician, but it's not about how many. It's about just one, the right one for you. When you experience the sincerity and attentiveness of the family doctors and PAs at Prairie Star and our sliding fee scale, you'll know you made the right choice. Prairie Star Health Center, 30th and K61 in Hutchinson. We all like to save money when and where we can, right? You can do that every day at Salt City Pawn and Jewelry. Hi, this is owner Paul Phillips inviting you to stop in and say hi to our friendly staff. And while you're here, check out over 3,000 square feet of great merchandise priced at outstanding values. We don't have to offer huge sale prices for one day only when we do that on a daily basis. Save big over retail prices on firearms, electronics, guitars and amps, name brand tools, video games, jewelry, and more. See us at 916 East 4th and Hutch, just east of 4th and Severance. We're proud to be alumni and supporters of all Blue Dragon Athletics. HCC Sports is brought to you by the Sportscaster Club members, Portfolio Recovery Associates, Dr. Robert Epp of the Hutchinson Clinic, Barkley Plumbing, Burning Chiropractic Center, Tim and Gina Ritter, along with Brian Strange of the Green Vision Group, Sutton Kaufman Transmission Service, Wade Patton Insurance, A&A Builders, Bold Office Shares, Mega Manufacturing, MAYB, Mid-America Youth Basketball, Lowen Corporation, and by Man, Wyatt, and Rice, LLC. These Sportscaster Club members help provide funds for HCC scholarships. It is halftime at Independence and Hutchinson with control of this football game. Hutchinson 37 and the Independence Pirates 7. This is the first half medicine shop game capsule. If the Blue Dragons stopped by the medicine shop to get a capsule for this game, it would have been a multivitamin because they have been vigorous here in the first half. They have produced points from the offense, points from the defense. They have looked tremendous and that is reflected in the halftime statistics. By the way, you've heard me talk about the medicine shop thousands of times. I'll tell you again. Hutchinson, a community blessed with a lot of terrific pharmacies. One of the very best of these, though, is the medicine shop. It's conveniently located at 14th and Main, offers free delivery, competitive prices, friendly folks, everything, in short, that you could possibly want in a pharmacy you'll find it 14th and Main. We've been talking about the Little White Castle on the northwest corner for a long, long time. If you stop by, make it your pharmacy, you will know why. Well, Hutchinson scored first in this game. It was a pass from Mason Shucker, and Jalen Irwin to hold it in. Dragons led 7-0 with six minutes gone in the first quarter. Independence put together quickly a three-play, 75-yard drive, tying it up on a 38-yard pass to Maurice King from quarterback Chase Hildreth, 7-7, still eight minutes to go in the first quarter. Then Desmond Jackson got loose from 29 yards out. The Dragons, after a successful extra point, made it 14-7. And Sebastian Garcia kicked a 37-yard field goal to make it 17-7 early in the second quarter. Then Khalil McLean took a 12-yard pass from Mason Shucker. Extra point was no good that time. It was 23-7. to And then the Dragons got a big break when the Independence Pirates came up with a horrible snap on fourth down. Hutchinson wound up with football at the one-yard line, and Aaron Collins took it in from there. Uh, the extra point made it 30-7. to And then Kelvin Clemens put the finishing touches on it after an interception, and I can't remember who that interception was by. Can you tell me? The that? one where he lateraled it? Yep, Monty Montgomery. Monty Montgomery made the interception on a ball that popped up in the air, lateraled it backwards, and it is Kelvin Clemens that gets the credit for the interception return for a touchdown that makes it 37-7 here at halftime. First downs in the first half, Hutchinson had 13, Pirates had 7. If we're looking at total offense, Hutchins at 231 yards, Independence 106. Dragons got 139 yards through the air, the Independence Pirates 130. It's just one of those nights where the Dragons have been terrific. Desmond Jackson had seven carries, good for 49 yards. Jonathan White, four for 31. Aaron Collins, seven for 35. Mason Shucker. 7 of 14 for 139 yards passing, two touchdowns. Jay, Jalen Irwin hauled in two passes for 56 yards. Khalil McLean caught a couple. You get the picture. It was all Hutch 
in the game's first 30 minutes. And as a result, the Dragons with a huge halftime lead. More from Independence in two minutes. This is Carter File, president of Hutchinson Community College. The proud tradition of Blue Dragon Athletics continues this fall. I encourage you to take advantage of the Blue Dragon All Sports Ticket. For just $60 for adults and $40 for K-8 through students, you can enjoy over 50 athletic events at Hutchinson Community College. These are general admission tickets that include football, volleyball, men's and women's basketball, baseball, and other selected events. Get yours today at the Sports Arena or at Area Dillon Stores. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and keep current with all Blue Dragon Athletic news and events at bluedragonsports.com. Our cat is now part of a regional transportation partnership with Sedgwick County Transportation and Wichita Transit. We are working together to provide rides to Wichita and back on Tuesdays. Wichita Transit has fixed route and paratransit service available within the city. Round trip costs range between $19 and $27. Advanced registration with our cat is required. Our cat is first come, first served general public transportation. Call 694-2913 for details. No time to fix breakfast? Just call us at Anchor Away 662-3100 and we'll have it ready for you. Choose from our selection of breakfast burritos, biscuits, or one of our five different complete breakfast plates. Breakfast from 7 to 10.30, Monday through Saturday. If you missed us for breakfast, we're here for lunch and dinner, too. Pick up your favorite Mexican dinner or take some home for the family. We're open till 9. That's Anchor Away drive through Carryout, and Catering under the Water Tower at B&Adams and Adams in Hutchinson, 662-3100. Next Tech Wireless Advanced Pay gives you great coverage, 4G LTE data, and you'll love the price. Plans start at $25 a month. Next Tech Wireless Advanced Pay is hassle-free, too. No contracts, no credit checks, and you can even bring your own device. Sign up now and get a free month of service when you purchase a new device or receive a free Moto E smartphone with new activation. It's Advanced Pay at Next Tech Wireless, starting at just $25 per month. Well, we see a lot of games throughout the last few years, but uh, none uh, more enjoyable, at least the first half more enjoyable than this one, 37-7, Hutchison leading. Steve Carpenter joining me. and Steve, we've witnessed a lot of ball games, and that first half of this one was pretty darn good. Yeah, uh, it was a matter of simply executing at a high level, and the Blue Dragons have done it on both sides of the ball. I think that second drive, or the scoring drive by Independence was a wake-up call. They had a couple of early stops. The Dragons had that 7 nothing lead, and then three plays, 75 yards. I think that was a wake-up call for the defense. They've been playing lights out ever since. And offensively, Mason, Mason Shucker looking so much more confident in the pocket tonight, a lot more touch on the ball. He had to be nervous last week against Ellsworth. Uh, true freshman uh, starting you know, his first game out of high school mm-hmm. to start in a, in a big game. So he, he looks so much more confident. The Dragon offensive line really set the tone early, getting uh, Collins and Desmond Jackson to the corner early. It, it's, it's been really a domination of independence, uh, kind of like the old days. We know it's not the old days, but it, a most impressive first half by Hutchinson. Well, it really was. We'll see what the second half will toll, but a very important uh, first half play. Dragons got first blood, as Rusty described, uh, to go up 7 nothing, And he came right back, just as we knew they would. They're a very talented team. But then the defense, the adjustments were made. And uh, when it was 14-7, to they had an opportunity to go down and tie. Did not, and Hutch took advantage of it. The only miss, uh, miss, the thing that negatively went bad was the missed extra point. I talked to Sebastian Garcia. He says the missed field goal that he, that he missed by about you know, 10 yards or so short really was in his head from the missed point after. He was more upset about the point after. So yeah. we'll see how he does. When you're a kicker, you, you've got to have short-term memory. You, 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 good or bad, you, can't, you have to forget your last kick. Uh, whether you know it was a game winner, whether it was a biffed uh, extra point, you got to go back and forget it and worry about the next one. He's a freshman; he's going to learn from that. And the next thing you know, he, I, I predict this: at some point in his career, he will break that school record field goal, 47 yards. Right, he's yep. going to go after a 48-yarder, and it landed about five yards uh, deep in the end zone. He's so well short, but he's got a leg to, to do it. He's also going against what win there was. So, you know, a few things working against them. They were going to go for it first. They called timeout. They 
decided to uh, go for it, then they put him back on the field. So all you know, all those things may have worked against him. But uh, you know, Sebastian Garcia has a great leg, and he's going to do some big things for Hutchinson. Yeah, he told me his range is between 50 and 60. So we'll see what happens, young man, out of South Carolina. Let's talk about other sports. What happened in Blue Dragon Nation? And other sports today. How was the little Irishman? Well. Uh, Happy camper, uh, extremely. An eleven nothing win over North Iowa area, and it was a, a, that was a concerning game for the Blue Dragons because Taylor Camp, their starting goalkeeper, had to serve a one game suspension because of a freak red card she got in a game out of Trinidad State, which ultimately was wiped out because of the weather. But the stats didn't count. The red card stuck, and. So and, and I question that. I question that too, but that's not you know that's another that's story for, for another question. time. <laughs> <laughs> that's another story for another time. But um, uh, Yadier Delgado started in goal today, and she did something that hasn't happened in a Blue Dragon game since 2010, where a goalkeeper got an assist. Yadi cleared the ball, and it bounced high over a couple of North Iowa defenders, and Braley Mater. Chased it down, went one on one with the keeper and scored. So a rare goalie assist was issued today on the first goal of the game. So not only does she get an assist, she gets a game winning assist. And as a goalkeeper, that's very rare. But the Dragons uh, had an 11 0 win. Braley Mater had her third career uh, hat trick. Uh, Megan Maslick had two more goals. She has now six for the season. Two other players scored goals. Uh, a, a very satisfying victory for Sammy Lane. He was very worried about that game yep. today. He came out on top and did a great job. Let's talk about uh, volleyball. Let's take us back to Wednesday. A, a dominating performance by the Blue Dragons over to Barton Cougars. Uh, 16 straight points in that first game. Yeah, uh, Barton scored the first four points of the match, and then Rachel Re- uh, Reed served the next 16. Uh, yeah, it, it was a, a very, again, dominant performance. The Dragons didn't pass well down in New Mexico. Played a very good uh, set of teams, uh, two nationally ranked teams, including New Mexico Military, which was in the national final four at the sports arena last year. So uh, uh, they learned their lesson well, and they played very well against a pretty good Barton team. Don't let that uh, one in five record deceive you. Barton's got some big hitters, and they're going to come along. So maybe Hutchinson caught them at the right time. But uh, they played very well. They play at Pratt on Monday on on Labor Day night. And then a big one Wednesday night in the sports arena is number nine Seward County comes in. And it's always a clash when the Dragons and the Saints meet. So we need to fill the arena big time with the crowd. 6.30 p.m. next Wednesday at the sports arena. We'd love to see a huge crowd. 6.30 6.30 p.m. market on your calendar right now. Let's talk uh, back to football real quick in the in, in the uh, uh, J- Kansas Jayhawk Conference. Highlands 17-10 to 10 over Ellsworth. Ellsworth starts the season at 0-2. Not as concerned other than the fact they're on our schedule and we had a tough uh, win against them. But Highland with back-to-back wins, a squeaker over, over Fort Scott, and now a, a touchdown win over Ellsworth. Yeah, Highland... Uh, you know, they just didn't have an offense last year, but they had a great defense. Looks like that's carried over to this year for Aaron Arnold's crew. 2-0 and after two very close wins. And before we check the rest, of, I also want to throw a shout-out to Justin Riggs and the Blue Dragon yes, cross-country yes. teams. They won. They, they swept the Terry Masters and Invitational Both last men and night. women. Both men and women. And that's the first time that's happened since 2005. And it was really a fun night last night out of Fun Valley. And it was even better to see the Blue Dragons finish out on top. Uh, football action right now in the start of the third period, Garden City 35, Don City 9, a similar type of score that we have in this ball game. So the, the Bronkbusters doing the two uh, just down the road rivals, the Conquistadors. Yeah, Garden City starting off hot. They've had some turmoil in not just the football program uh, with the death of uh, one of their players early on, but their athletic department's in a little bit of turmoil mm-hmm. right now with the resignation of John Green. And, but uh, the football team seems to be focused. Jeff Sims has them playing hard tonight, and they're, they're on their way to a victory. Let's talk a little bit about uh, some of the other sports that, that are getting set to take place. Uh, some practicing going on. And getting into October, we'll be having more jamborees for basketball. They'll be getting busy in uh, uh, both teams. It's an exciting time of the year. It is. Yeah, you get uh, you get uh, the kids in school, and it's really the first time you get to see the basketball, men and women, and uh, hopes are exceptionally high for both this year. You know, Blue Dragon men are just, you know, 
w- one full season removed from a national championship. And uh, John Otchis's crew is going to be a lot better this year. Uh, both teams appear to be very talented, and they're going to be a lot of fun to watch this year. Men's golf gets going in their fall season. Mm-hmm. Ranked on, number, ranked number eight. eight in the country in the uh, golf week uh, rankings, the, the coaches poll. And they, they get started with their fall season, the first of five in Lubbock at the West Texas A&M Invitational on September 10th. So a week from Monday, uh, they'll play uh, 54 holes down in Texas, and that'll be the first of five uh, in, the, in the fall season, first of five tournaments in the fall season. 37-7 at halftime right now. Blue Dragons on top of Indy. Let's talk about your assistants very quickly. Your young and little photographer, she was pretty excited because she caught that pitch for the <laughs> touchdown. There's many times you don't get a picture like that in a, in a photographer's career, but she's pretty juiced. She caught it. Yeah, Bria Rogers is one of my uh, two new photographers this year. I've got pretty much a whole new staff this year. Uh, we, we, we threw Maddie Koger in, into the fire this afternoon in soccer, and she gets four goals in the first seven minutes, and she's wrapping out stats left and right. But i got a whole new staff this year. I really like these kids. They're, they're, they're very enthusiastic, and they, they want to get better every time. Bree is uh, really a photographer when it comes to uh, – when it comes to photography, she's working both with my staff and both Brett Howier and the uh, newspaper staff. It's uh, uh, I'm I'm really looking forward to working with this staff this year. It's going to be another great year, and you know we'll we'll do as best we can to keep everything covered on BlueDragonSports.com. Yeah, and also the Blue Dragon Sports Network. Uh, he had a, talking to Wolf Acker down there, he says I could be real lazy and just stay at home in my recliner. And watch, no, you can't. Watch, we'll watch get the, here. Watch the game, but he's here, and uh, it's a, it's a good one that we're seeing. But we appreciate all the work the young photographers do from the video department on ACC campus. Yeah, you know, Sebastian Lucas is, is is an awesome kid. It's, he, he's actually my one uh, re- returning sophomore uh, that uh, he does a great job. Does so, a very good job. All right. Job. Well, I'm going to turn it back over to Rusty and Darren. And again, it's still at halftime, 37-7. to 7. I'm going to take a two-minute timeout. We'll be back with more. Again, your halftime at 37-7, the lead for the Blue Dragons. We'll be back with more from Indy right after this two-minute timeout. Hi, Brian Bobo, General Manager at Midwest Supersource. It's a holiday weekend, and we're going to celebrate, but only for a short time. We will only be open from 10 to 4 on Labor Day, and we are having our penny over sale. That's right, a penny over on all new Ford and Toyotas. We didn't forget about pre-owned. We have reduced prices on all of our inventory. Remember, you only have a short time, so come see us on Labor Day from 10 to 4, or visit us online at MidwestSuperstores.com. Most of us dream of retiring and having financial security. Do you have a plan? This is Jay Pitzer with Strategic Financial Concept. Our mission is to help create and maintain wealth for our clients through effective risk and asset management. I'd love to sit down with you and show you how we can help you keep more of your hard-earned money over your lifetime. Call 960-0749 for a cup of coffee and for the best one-on-one conversation you've ever had with an advisor. Securities offered through the ON Equity Sales Company, member FINRA, SIPC, Investment Advisory Services, is offered through Owen Investment Management Company. It's football season. When the weather is warm one day and cold the next, stay ahead of cold and flu season by drinking plenty of liquids, getting enough rest, and keeping your hands sanitized. Come see the friendly folks at Ashcraft Pharmacy, your locally owned Health Mart Pharmacy, for over-the-counter medications to help alleviate symptoms. And if you need a prescription, we offer free mail-out, free delivery, or call ahead for our handy curbside service. Go Dragons! From Ashcraft Pharmacy in the Heart Shopping Center, South Hutchinson, and Health Mart, caring for you and about you. HCC Sports is brought to you by the Sportscaster Club members, Portfolio Recovery Associates, Dr. Robert F. of the Hutchinson Clinic, Barkley Plumbing, Burning Chiropractic Center, Tim and Gina Ritter, along with Brian Strange of the Green Vision Group, Sutton Kaufman Transmission Service, Wade Patton Insurance, A&A Builders, Bold Office Shares, Mega Manufacturing, MAYB, MidAmerica Youth Basketball, Low Corporation, and by Man Y. Wyatt and Rice, LLC. These Sportscaster Club members help provide funds for HCC scholarships. Well, I listened a little bit during the halftime uh, while Glenn was talking to Steve Carpenter. <laughs> Not Steve McLean, Steve Carpenter. I listened to a little bit of the Independence folks, and they were digesting the fact that their squad trails 37-7 at halftime, and their comment was, uh, the team is explosive enough to come back, but one thing they cannot afford to do, 
their consensus they can't even give Hutchinson a field goal in the second half and come back. Well, I think it'll be pretty doggone tough for the Pirates to score 30 on the Hutchinson defense that we've seen through three halves of football. But also, Darren, I think important for the Blue Dragons, let's go ahead and finish this game off on a very, very positive note. You've got Iowa Western coming in. May not be quite the potent Iowa Western team uh, that the Dragons saw a year ago, but nevertheless, it's a name with great, great value in the junior college game. And uh, certainly if Hutchinson finishes this off, well, the Dragons could set themselves off for a lofty national ranking, which is what you have to do if you're going to contend for a title uh, by winning next week at home. Take this one play at a time and don't let the Pirates build any momentum. So don't hurt yourself by giving up stupid penalties or stupid turnovers and just get out of this one. You're right. A field goal could seal this. But if there's explosiveness shown at all by the Pirates, you have to be ready for it. The Blue Dragons did a good job of shutting down any momentum that the Pirates tried to build just before halftime. The word game plan was brought up. I think you have to keep in mind that Coach Brown told SB Nation he doesn't teach X's and O's. He's telling these guys to go out there and play backyard football. So if that's the best he has, what he showed at the end of that, that first half, that second quarter at the end there, then the Blue Dragons are in fine shape. They just have to keep shutting down those deep passes. They've already forced Hildreth into two interceptions. He had none in game one. And Hutchinson will get the football to open the second half. I think the Dragons have to be alert for the possibility of an onside kick because the Pirates have to create a lot of extra possessions for themselves in the game's next 30 minutes. But instead, the kick is deep, and the Dragons field it at the 2. It is Irwin that starts back. He's tripped up at the 10-yard line. Nice defensive play made downfield. Tremendous play for the Independence Pirates on the kick coverage. Wow. That was Jawan Treadwell. Yeah, Treadwell came in, and he had already dove to the ground. He was strong enough with one swipe of the arm to bring Irwin down to the ground with him. And Irwin might well have been advised to let that one go. So the Dragons start in a precarious position at the 11-yard line. Quarterback continues to be Mason Shucker. And there's a flag before the snap. And clearly into the neutral zone were the Pirates. But they're going to say they were drawn in by the Dragons. Well, they're stepping it off the other way. The official pointed as though it was on Hutchinson. But they step it out the other direction. So the Dragons benefit by five yards. That might be the same official that couldn't tell the backwards pass in the first half. Dragons want to throw it, and they throw it upfield. It is incomplete in the general area of Leroy Watson. Watson, the fourth, kind of wanted it on the deep route, and Shucker left it short and kind of in between closer to the Pirate defenders. Independence had problems with penalties last week, 14 against Dodge City. So it becomes a second down and five, and you'd love to see the Blue Dragons get a first down to get a little bit better field position here. Hutchinson leads the game 37-7, just underway in the third quarter. And a handoff goes to the left side, and a nice gain. That's Desmond Jackson. He's close to a first down. Needed five, got more than that. They'll move the chains if Desmond Jackson sits and the Dragons get a badly needed first down to get the ball out across the 20. Coming into this game, head coach Ryan Rhodes knew that the defensive ends for this Pirate team were better than they were last year. Uh, so far, though, Blue Dragons have been able to seal those defensive ends off on those nice little bursts to the outside. Dragons will throw, and it pops up in the air, and it is caught by an offensive lineman. And so it's a complete pass for virtually no gain that ball popped right up in the air and it was pulled in by blue dragon robert mervin pick up of one yard that probably will be the only catch that mervin has in his career it'll be one of those stories he tells his kids and his grandkids like remember that one time out in independence i showed those soft hands in the middle of traffic second down nine we played a minute of the third quarter
The Dragons fake the end around and go back the other direction, a little misdirection play. Fake the reverse. The play went to the side of the field from which the reverse started, and it is a gain across the 25 to about the 27. Let's call it a gain of four, third down and five. Dragons would love to be able to keep the ball on the ground, but I think this Pirate team is too good to let Hutchinson sustain drives solely on the ground. Probably going to have to complete some passes. Don't know that they'll try it here. They will not. They try to get to the outside and not able to go very far as Aaron Collins and Hutchinson will have to punt. Thought he had the block set by Peyton Fears where he was going to be able to cut it upfield. Instead, went outside and kept rushing toward the sideline. That's where the Pirates were able to close him out. So the Pirates do what they needed to do on the first set of plays for the Dragons. Gave up a first down. Let Hutchinson take a couple of minutes off the clock. But now, presumably, they'll get the ball back on a punt. For the Dragons, Matt Jones needs a good snap. Pirates have 10 men up. They're coming after the punt, but Jones gets off a beauty. And a fair catch signaled and made at the 38-yard line of the Pirates. Hauled in there by Marquel Odom. And they actually put it down at the 39. So the Pirates will start there. Trailing Hutchinson 37-7. to it is Blue Dragon football on Country 102.9, Hutchinson's Country Station on KHUT. Now the Dragon defense. That was very, very good in the first half. We'll look at a new quarterback. This is Antoine Wright, 6'5", 200, out of Miami, Florida. He was in for one series in the first half. Corinthian Cunningham is a running back. He gives him the ball, and a nice gain off the right side, almost 10 yards for Cunningham. They may give him 10 yards and a first down. That's the first real hole we've seen open up on that Blue Dragon defensive line to the left side. Antoine Wright again has Cunningham back with him. Both teams operating out of the shotgun. Wright snap, takes the snap. Again gives to Cunningham, and this time he is trapped in the backfield, reverses. That doesn't usually bode well in this conference, and it doesn't here as Cunningham has run down for a loss of four. Ran about 35, 40 yards to lose four. Got a Blue Dragon injured at about midfield, guys. We'll take a look and see who he is. In that situation where the field is reversed, you have to stay home and essentially let everything close around the runner. And the Blue Dragon defense did that perfectly. None better than Kelvin Clemens, who held his ground against Roy Livingston and was able to shed him at the last minute to make that tackle. And let's go ahead and take a break while they tend to the injured Blue Dragon. More football in 30 seconds. For over 15 years, Erickson Custom Building has designed, built, and remodeled homes and commercial projects in central Kansas. Whether you're looking to replace a deck, wanting to build an addition, or remodel your kitchen, our customers receive individualized attention, quality craftsmanship, and exceptional customer service from start to finish. Erickson Custom Building offers new construction and remodeling services in addition to commercial and insurance projects. Visit our website today at ericksoncustombldg.com. The injured Blue Dragon is Caleb Price. Uh, he's putting a little bit of weight on the right foot, but not much as he goes off the football field. For the Pirates, second down 14 at their own 45-yard line. Antoine Wright. Indicates he's ready, drops back, two-step drop, loads it up, throws it downfield, and overthrows everybody. Pass was intended for Marquise King, who is an outstanding receiver, but that time the Dragon defender running stride for stride with King. Yeah, Kelvin Clemens has him wrapped up defensively. You couldn't ask for any better coverage, and that's the classic example of drawing the straight line in the dirt out on the playground and saying, hey, run the nine. I'm just going to loft it up there to you. Wasn't even looking to see if King was open. Wright was just looking to launch that one down the field. Third down, 14. Pirate 45-yard line. Wright. 
keeps the football himself and breaks to the outside, runs into an official. That could help the Hutchinson cause, and Wright appears to be a yard or so short of the first down. Actually ran right into an official, almost certainly would have had a first down had that not occurred. The umpire gets the assisted tackle on that play. It is short of the first down by about two yards. When you trail by 30, you're at the Hutchinson 43, you'd go for it in this situation. When that happens, when Wright ran into the umpire, you could hear the collective groan of the fans for the Pirates' side saying, <laughs> we should have had the first down. And they may yet get it, but they need two on fourth down. Wright in the, in the shotgun gets a high snap, hands it off, and they will get the first down at the 41-yard line. It was Cunningham on the carry. Or was it Chapman? They, were, they might look at this. It's really close. No, nope, they're going to give it to him. So it is a first down for the Pirates at the Hutchinson 41-yard line. Four minutes played in the third quarter. Hutchinson still up 37 to 7. Antoine Wright awaits the snap. Hands off, actually keeps it in. Wright is breaking tackles all the way down to the 30 yard line. Fake the handoff, turned out to be effectively just a quarterback draw. And big, high stepping, long stepping Antoine Wright has hurt Hutchinson a couple of times. Clarence Hicks did such a good job in the first half of sniffing those out for the Blue Dragons on those options, but that's when Hildreth was running it from the quarterback spot. Now with Wright, it's a different kind of fake. And the Blue Dragons are having a lot of people get hurt in this game. There's another Blue Dragon down. It's a hot night. And while they tend to the Dragon, and we hope it's only cramps, we're going to take another 30-second break. The Hutch Medicine Shop and the Hutch Blue Dragons have a lot in common. In addition to our logos both being blue, all three pharmacists at the Medicine Shop graduated from HCC. Rick Stone in 1984, Brent Bauman in 2001, and Lacey Stone in 2007. In fact, the Medicine Shop has employed over a dozen HCC students over the past 15 years who are now Kansas pharmacists. The Medicine Shop and the Blue Dragons working together as one team. Dragon, Latavian beaten, and he's walking off pretty normally. I think he'll be fine. It is the first down, though, at the Hutchinson 32-yard line, and the first significant drive of the second half belongs to the Independence Pirates. Hutchinson still leads it 37-7, ten and a half to play, third quarter. Finally ready. Right, takes the snap, throws it, completes it. Dragon misses a tackle and turns an outstanding receiver loose and down to the 13-yard line with another catch, Marquise King. Kelvin Clemens missed that short tackle. That's the only thing we've really seen him do wrong so far in this game, just slid right off the shoulder pads of King. Fortunately for him, Josh Relliford able to track King down on the backside to save the touchdown. And another Dragon is down. It looks like Relliford who made the tackle. Now, I'm not sure what this is. He's not acting like a cramp here. Training staff out there looking. And he's going to get up and be okay. Meanwhile, the Independence Pirates quietly putting together an effective drive. Looking for the first points of the second half. Hutchinson with a nice lead. But the Pirates realize you can't climb a mountain without getting started. First time Independence has been in the red zone. All right, we are, I believe, ready to go. It is a first down near the Hutchinson 13-yard line. Antoine Wright takes the snap, hands off. No keeps, it. no keeps it. Breaks to the outside, and he'll have a touchdown. I'm going to tell you what, Antoine Wright doing a heck of a job. And that is exactly what the Pirates needed 
to get the second half underway. They put together a long drive, and it was more than anything the running of Antoine Wright that was the difference in that drive. Yeah, he kept it every single time he went on that option fake. So the Blue Dragons really want to hone in on that and realize that he's not really reading the defense. He's just looking to fake him out initially and try to keep it for the run himself. 37-13, and now the extra point to make it 37-14. High snap, but the extra point is up, and it is good. Pirates with the first points of the second half. Now within... 37-14, Hutchinson will get a chance at the football when we return to Indy in 30 seconds. Just when you thought you were done with taxes, you got a letter from the IRS. Maybe you're being audited, or maybe you filed for an extension and still need some tax help. We at h &R Block are there for you. We don't stop working on April 15th. Our tax professionals are here to help you year-round. So, if you have tax issues you need a hand with, even if H&R Block didn't do your taxes the first time around, visit our offices in Hutchinson, Lyons, or Ellsworth, and let our experienced tax professionals help get you every dollar you deserve. Here comes the Pirate kickoff, and it is a spinner taken at the seven-yard line. Brought out quickly to the 15, to the 20, to the 24-yard line. Brought back for the Blue Dragons by Khalil McClain. The touchdown scored by the Independence Pirates, Antoine Wright on the keeper. First rushing touchdown against this Hutchinson defense so far in this football season. And now you start to sense, okay, Pirates have made a statement that they're not going to give up. They've gotten back in the game just a little bit. Now can the Blue Dragon offense regenerate some enthusiasm and put some points of its own on, on the board. They'll start with a give up the middle in a big hole and out to the 35-yard line with a first down. Quick hitter. Right up the middle. And the Dragons, Aaron Collins gets 15. Dragons have got to hang on to the ball for a while, give that defense a little bit of time to rest, even though they've just been in at halftime. They need a little time to rest, get some first downs here, and grind out some time. Let's make that a 10-yard gain from the 25 to the 35. Two wideouts to the right side. Now one of them shifts into the slot, actually moves to the other side of the formation. Quarterback gets a poor snap, hands off, and the Dragons pounding in the middle and working hard and getting yards across the 40 to the 43. There was some terrific effort in there. Boy, he reminds me of Lane out of Norton that we had about, what, seven years yeah. ago, Rusty, that just keeps grinding those legs. We saw him get over 200 yards against Garden City yeah. that year. He reminds me of him a lot. He looks slightly built, but he's six foot 214, and he is one strong kid. Second down, two for the Blue Dragons. Shucker hands off. There's another run to the Dragons. This is Jonathan White, and he has a first down out at the 48-yard line. You know, he's the same height as me, and just a couple pounds heavier, but you don't say anything nice like that to me. We haven't uh, seen you run through <laughs> linebackers yet this year. If we see that... <laughs> I mean, he's, he's not only taking on one or two linebackers. He's going through three linebackers 50, at a time. In 50 years, he was, he, was, he was breathless over there. Didn't have a word to say, did he? <laughs> I was thinking about weight distribution is what I was thinking about. <laughs> yeah, that's about. the problem with mine is my weight distribution. <laughs> Got another player down. He's going to be okay. He's going to pop up. I'm going to tell you what. You cannot overestimate the importance of staying hydrated. And this appears to be a cramp again. Yeah. Jonathan Whiteoff might be an ankle. Coming off. I'll tell you what, the difference that I've seen just in the, that drive by Indy comparatively to what Chase Hildreth did is Chase was primarily a passer. Where this young man can run the football, this right kid out of Miami. And we haven't seen for sure that he can throw it, but he can definitely run it. And he's been the most effective of the Indy quarterbacks thus far. Dragons with a first down at the 48. 8.15 to play, third quarter. McLean will get another chance, wraps it up, tries to get to the edge, shoves off one tackle, and then is hauled down. That'll be a face mask. Flag. 
The ball carrier for the Blue Dragons, Aaron Collins, got to the 48-yard line. He is going to get some more yards tacked onto that because definitely a grab of the face mask. Yeah, it's a classic stiff arm to the face mask by the running back, which is legal. But when Deshaun McNary came in there, he not only grabbed it, he pulled him to the ground by the face mask. So it'll be the big one. It'll be a 15-yard walk-off. And now the Blue Dragons march their way down to the 34-yard line on the penalty. Exactly eight minutes to play, third quarter. Dragons trying to answer a Pirate touchdown. Shucker hands off and bouncing off the pile trying to get the outside and not going down very quickly at all for the Blue Dragons. Nice second effort. Let's see where let's see where his foot touched or where his knee touched. That was Drake Bolas on the carry. And he's gotten about three or four carries in this football game. Got about three yards on the first down. Still very quiet here. Crowd was enthused when the Pirates moved downfield. Now the Dragons at the 31 of Indy. And they give it to Bolas, and Bolas test in the middle, pushing the pile forward. Nice gain. It'll be close to the 27-yard line. Injury, injury update, guys. Jonathan White getting his right ankle taped. I think he tweaked a little bit out there. I think we'll see him again, though. Dragons with a third down and three. They have a pirate down on the field. The interesting thing about the Blue Dragon offense, the way it moved in the first half, yeah, there was some passing, but that was opened up by those runs outside of the tackles. Now you're seeing more of the Blue Dragon offense exposing between the tackles right down the gut of this pirate defense. Coach Ryan Rhodes told me in our meeting earlier this week he thought that the Pirates would be a little bit vulnerable, thought the Dragons would have a little bit of trouble on the edge, but they really didn't in the first half. But he, he did think the big vulnerability was up the middle. They're tending to an injured Pirate. Gives us another opportunity to hear from these friends of Blue Dragon football. Back in the half Rookie a family name has always been connected to serving the Hutchinson community. And you can expect the same kind of high-quality service when you visit Rokey Family Flooring. They believe you deserve to be treated like family, so they've invested in their own talented and trustworthy installers to lay your floors. No outside contractors will ever knock on your door if Rothy works for you. Let them show you their expansive selection of name brand flooring and trust your home to the best. Rothy Family Flooring, 325 North Main, Hutchinson. All right, I think the Independence Pirate that is shaken up appears to be... Davis. Davis. Six. Yep. Pretty good player. He comes off, and I'm not sure how quickly he's going to return. Dragons have a third and three between the 28 and 27 yard line of the Pirates. Hutchinson leading 37 14. And a handoff, and the Dragons will get close to the first down, but not quite. Hole closed quickly. Got to get to the 24 yard line, and. Aaron Collins down at the 25, a pickup of two, fourth down and one. And I like the way the Blue Dragons are running the football here. Don't be surprised if they keep the offense on the field and go for it. Well, I'm sure they will at the 25-yard line of the Pirates. Independence crowd trying to fire up the Pirates. What will the Dragons do? They need at least one. And they'll give it to Collins, and Collins won't get it. Collins cut down, no gain, might have lost a yard. Had Jaquiz cross in the backfield to force him to the outside. Juan Harris was there to polish him off. Our defense has twice stopped Hutchinson here in the third quarter. Hutchinson still leading 37-14. But it is getting a little bit more interesting for the Pirate crowd. And unsurprisingly, the quarterback continues to be Antoine Wright. I'd like to echo Glenn's comments. It is interesting that the Pirates, known for the passing game, especially with their coach Jason Brown, a former quarterback, usually like to get the quarterback through the air, getting it done with Wright as the quarterback on the ground. Wright takes the snap. This time does handoff. Nope, keeps it. Fake the handoff. 
This time he is gobbled up after a gain of one. Yeah, he's doing a live read right there. He stuck the ball into the belly of the running back, but then hung on to it and kind of optioned out of it and straight up the middle was stopped. He's seeing the words. I don't know that he's reading through the pages. He, this quarterback really wants to keep that ball. Credit Caleb Bryce for knowing that Wright was going to pull that ball out at the last minute. I'm going to have to use that. You know, that's pretty good. That's a pretty good statement right there. Second down and nine. Wright in the gun. Takes the snap. This time he does hand off, and a little slant will get a couple of yards for the Pirates. Out close to the 30-yard line, a little shy of it. Leaving a third down and seven. Hutchinson defense has been on the field quite a bit here in the third quarter. It's a hot night. And Dragon defense wasn't out there that much in the first half. So we'll see if that defense can make a big play on third down and seven. Quarterback wants the throw, won't get a chance. Ball pops loose, and it is recovered by Independence back at the 30, well, let's make that the 26-yard line. Oh, and the quarterback is hurt, guys. He went down hard. That just about was a big turnover. Clarence Hicks gets the sack fumble, stripped it out of there, adds to his two sacks and a forced fumble from last week. And now you are correct, Glenn. Antoine Wright is being tended to. Boy, there have been a lot of a lot of players shaken up, most of whom have returned to the game. I don't think any or not at least few of the injuries have been really serious. This is a big one for the Independence Pirates because the quarterback in the first half for the Pirates, Chase Hildreth, pretty much a throwing quarterback. This time, running quarterback, and I think he might have just had the wind knocked out of him, but he's going to come off. It is an obvious punt situation for the Pirates on 4th and 11 at their 27-yard line. Wright stormed off the field looking like he was more upset than anything. For the Blue Dragons, Marquise Whitmire awaits the punt, which will come from Adam Berry. Barry gets a good snap this time. Dragons will get close. Nice punt. Perfect spiral. And the Dragons will just let it go. And what a bounce it's going to take. And Hutchinson is going to be down at the one. Wow. What a punt. What a punt. Line of scrimmage was the 26-yard line. 74. I'm going to call it 73 yards on that punt. Dead at the one. By far his best of the season came into the game with a long of 40 and only averaging 30 yards per punt. I mean, he just put up a perfect spiral, and Whitmire had no chance to field it. He was way too shallow for the punt that the Pirates came up with. And now the Blue Dragons, who have not scored in the third quarter, but who still lead 37-14, you can't afford a mistake here. And goal number one here is to get off of your own goal line. Mason Shucker with by far his worst field position of the season. He's in the end zone, gets a high snap, hands it off. Dragons power play on the ground. We get a little bit of breathing room, perhaps out to the two yard line. Ball carrier Aaron Collins. KU's taking a one point lead in the fourth quarter over Nickel State, 18 17. That is almost a must win. Yep, game and that, I don't know if they're going to get the extra point or not. K State getting closer, 24 19 in the fourth. They trail. South Dakota. That would be a huge upset. It is a second down and nine for the Blue Dragons. Ball at the Hutchinson two-yard line. High snap. Terrible snap. Dragons lucky to get it off and battling to get out to about the one-yard line was Aaron Collins. And the athleticism of Hutchinson quarterback Mason Shucker being tested right now on some Really dreadful snaps from center. Not the first time we've seen that tonight either. That 6-4 frame really helping him out, stretching high above his helmet to keep that ball in the possession of the Blue Dragons. We played 12 minutes of the third quarter. Hutchinson 37-14. But the Dragons at their own three-yard line. Third down. A bunch needed. Dragons run left. Don't get the first down, but get some breathing room out across the five to perhaps the six 
or the seven yard line. Juan Harris really got in there early on Collins, but that goes back to how the running backs have been able to drive through these defenders already tonight. But that helps Matt Jones a lot because he won't be standing right on the back line of that end zone on this punt. Definite confidence booster for your punter. But for the Pirates, a chance to get a little closer. Safety awaits at the Hutchinson 40-yard line. Matt Jones needs a big one. Kick against the wind. Gets a nice snap. Gets it off. And a pretty good kick. Comes out to the 40-yard line. Fielded there. And break it to the outside. The ever-dangerous ever dangerous Odom. And he takes it well upfield on the return. Chesterman, the long snapper, was the first on the scene. And then a couple of Blue Dragons in Art Green and Nick Shelton got tangled up, and that allowed the edge to open up for the punt returner. So the Dragon defense will have to get a stop as the Pirates, with momentum on their side, not a lot of it yet, but momentum nevertheless here in the second half, will have it at the Hutchinson 27 yep, yards there's line. a flag on the play, so they're going to bring it out a little bit farther, see where they mark it. It went against any guys on the penalty. Okay, didn't see the flag. They'll bring it back to the 37. Must have been a hold. Hutchinson defense trying to dig in. Indy at the Hutchinson 37-yard line. And the give is off to running back Corinthian Cunningham. Looked like he had a hole, and then it closed pretty quickly. It winds up being about a three-yard gain. That is Antoine Wright back in there at the quarterback spot, I think. Nope. Yes, it is. It is Antoine Wright. He is all right after coming off the field, looking like he might have been injured a little more significantly than that a few minutes ago. Second down, seven. Wright takes the snap. Pressure comes from behind. He unloads, got a receiver, and it is out of bounds and incomplete. Throwing it all the way down inside the five, but incomplete. Third down now, six. It was that hitch and go. They had Art Green beat with King over there on the far sideline, and Wright just overthrew him. Third down and six. Still a minute 19 left in a third quarter in which the only points of the quarter, a touchdown by Indy. Hutchinson leading 37-14. Right hands off, or half take the hands off, kept it. And the Dragons don't give up but a yard or two to the running quarterback of the Pirates. They've keyed in on the fact that he wants to hang on to it, even though it's a great fake. And Kermari Gaines was not fooled. Fourth down, the better part of seven yards to go for the Pirates. Now if the Pirates don't pick it up, all of a sudden Hutchinson has pretty good field position. Clock moving inside a minute to play in the third quarter. Quarterback wants to throw, throws it long, and it is going to be caught for a touchdown. What a throw. What a marvelous catch in the right-hand corner of the end zone. And just outrunning everybody and making a wonderful over-the-shoulder grab. I'm trying to pick up the number for the Pirates. And Roy Livingston. Roy Livingston. Livingston. His second catch of the season. And the Pirates strike. And now we have a football game. Clemens and Livingston were wearing the same football pants. Clemens could not have been closer, and the ball still got in there. Now flags on the extra point yeah. before the snap. It was thrown over the right shoulder. and I'm going to tell you what. Antoine Wright's got a good arm. Kelvins could not get to the outside corner. and just went right over his shoulder. Great catch, great throw. Illegal substitution called here on the Blue Dragons. Man, do you? Do you think about going for two? Evidently not. Mm -hmm. 
extra point would make this 37-21. Extra points up. Blocked. Blocked. And they scramble for it. And Pick it up. Hutchinson can score off of this. It is picked up by the Blue Dragons. This could be two the other way. Dragons need a block. And break it to the outside. The Dragons are going to turn this into a two-pointer for themselves. For the Blue Dragons. I'm going to tell you what. There have been some improbable plays in this game for the Blue Dragons. That was Kelvin Clemens that wound up with it after the ball popped loose. Yeah, I've got a flag, guys. Almost got caught from behind three times, including at the end by the kicker, Adam Berry. But Tank Morgan throwing the last block to get him into the end zone, at least for the moment. Unless it's, it could be an illegal block on the Dragons, but I don't know. He had a whole he had a whole covey of blockers in front of him as he came down the field. It'll be declined, and yep. the Dragons will get two. His hold. Dragons will get two. And that will take the Hutchins in total to 39 to 20. You don't see that very often. Block, kick, return for two, but they still not put it up on the scoreboard. Well, they had that holding penalty on the return, so they won't get the two points. Oh, I thought they called it on the Pirates. Yep, yeah, I thought it was on the Pirates, but you might be right. They had a, yeah, hold on the Blue Dragons on the return. Okay, so it'll so. save 37-20. Hutchins will get the football with 35 seconds to go in the third quarter. This Hutchinson team has played it pretty conservatively, still have a three-score lead. Dragons may need to open it up just a bit. This is the part where that momentum is starting to take place here for independence, and you have to squell it if you are the Blue Dragons. How many times have you seen it in the game of football? You start playing conservative, saying we've scored enough, and all of a sudden it may or may not be enough. That's the difference between letting off that gas just a little bit and forcing it all the way to the floorboard. Here comes the pirate kickoff. It's onside, and it's recovered by the Dragons. They scramble for it on the ground, but I think it's clearly covered by the Dragons. And a flag over here at the 37. Yeah, they were offside right by the ball on the kickoff. Hutchinson will turn that down and have field position out near the 50. All right. Blue Dragon lead, once 37-7. That was our halftime score. Now 37-20. Still half a minute to play in the third quarter. Rusty Hills, Glenn Grunwald, and Darren Dunn with you from Independence. And they're going to tack the yardage off. Should, it's going to be Hutchinson's football. I'm trying to figure out why they're moving it upfield five yards. They assess the offside penalty after the recovery of the onside kick. Darren Dunn, you're our expert on the rules. Right call? Yep, you described it correctly. All right, Blue Dragons need to get something going. And they go with a run again. And there's Right now, the Pirates are just reading almost every play as the run. Blue Dragons are dedicating themselves to taking time off the clock. They have done that. But momentum, which can be a pretty fickle lady, has definitely swung back to the Pirate side, even though Hutchinson has a 17-point lead. Interior lineman Ben Hutch, Jr., finally able to penetrate. Dragons taking their time, and there will be no more snaps in the third quarter because it has concluded. At the end of three, Hutchinson 37, Independence 20. Fourth quarter in one minute. 
We all like to save money when and where we can, right? You can do that every day at Salt City Pawn and Jewelry. Hi, this is owner Paul Phillips inviting you to stop in and say hi to our friendly staff. And while you're here, check out over 3,000 square feet of great merchandise priced at outstanding values. We don't have to offer huge sale prices for one day only when we do that on a daily basis. Save big over retail prices on firearms, electronics, guitars and amps, name brand tools, video games, jewelry and more. See us at 916 East 4th and Hutch, just east of 4th and Severance. We're proud to be alumni and supporters of all Blue Dragon Athletics. Sure, there are lots of choices around for a primary care physician, but it's not about how many. It's about just one, the right one for you. When you experience the sincerity and attentiveness of the family doctors and PAs at Prairie Star and our sliding fee scale, you'll know you made the right choice. Prairie Star Health Center, 30th and K61 in Hutchinson. For the Blue Dragons, as we start the fourth quarter, a second down at the 46-yard line of the Pirates. Second down and 10. Hutchinson 37-20, up over the country's number five ranked junior college, 11. Might be a free play. Dragons throw it over the middle, incomplete. I didn't see a flag. It looked to me like somebody had to be offside or movement. It was Corbin Higgins getting in there well too early. Oh, there's the flag out in front of us. I didn't see it was blocked off by one of the Indy coaches. Guy score up in Lawrence, 2020 in overtime, tied up between KU and Nickel State. Like I say, he was baited across. Sure looked like Corbin Higgins just took a free run, but he must have saw a slight movement by a lineman to justify rushing across the line of scrimmage. Ball comes back to the Hutchinson side of the field. We have 15 minutes to play in this one, and the Blue Dragons, after playing beautifully in the first half, right now kind of hanging on. Dragons will throw. They float it downfield, and it is going to be incomplete. Intended for Irwin. He was covered as well as anybody could be. Incomplete pass at the 15-yard line. Irwin still on that inside route of the sluggo, and the ball was thrown to the outside corner flag. He just hadn't gotten there yet. Better path was made by the defender. Well, the Blue Dragons really haven't been able to get much done in terms of offense here in the second half. Three conversions have been made on third down between these two teams. All three are by the Blue Dragons. This is a third and 15. Trying to set up the draw, and they complete it. And it's going to turn into a big play for the Dragons down inside the 20. Run out of bounds at about the 10-yard line with a whopping first down for the Blue Dragons. Big number 20, Aaron Collins. Perfectly set up screen. Well, right in front of Coach Goose. And I tell you what, he turned up the the speed on that and tightrope that side. First down, Dragons. And the ball down at the, they're going to say, closer to the 12-yard line. Dragons get it in the end zone here. That might be a game breaker. Collins will get another chance, and he gets what he can, which is not a whole lot, maybe two as he tests the interior of the Independence line. And we'll keep the clock moving. By the time the Dragons snap it again, this game clock will be under 14 minutes to play. Fourth time the Dragons have been into the red zone, have converted on the first three entries. And got only one yard on that carry. And now we have a different Dragon running back. It's Drake Bolas. Seeing him for the first time this season. They're going to throw it. They float it in the end zone, and it is incomplete. Boy, he was not a well-thrown ball because Jalen Irwin was wide open. That should have been a touchdown. Yeah, the pass got him turned around. If it was truly to the corner of the end zone, that's six because Jalen Irwin was left completely alone. So it is a third down and nine. 
Dragons are definitely in field goal territory. At least field goal range. And they'll give it to Bolas, and he just keeps it right on that right hash mark, doesn't get anything. And the Dragons obviously plan to get three out of this. Bolas wrapped up immediately by Davis. Davis, you'll remember, went off the field early on, but most of those players we've seen come off the field tonight have made a return to playing action. Now, Sebastian Garcia will try to get the first points of the second half for the Blue Dragons. They'll put the ball down on the 19, 29-yard field goal, slight angle from the right. Snap is okay. Kick is up. Kick is long enough. And the kick is good enough. No, it's wide. It's no. wide. It is not good. So the Pirates are still alive. Down 17, 13 minutes to go on the missed field goal. It'll come out to the 20. Wow. You kind of liked his chances because his first two misses had been pulled to the left. So since he was on the right hash, he thought maybe that was going to correct it out enough to bring it back toward the middle. Somehow just let it sneak outside the upright. Pirates have gotten new life. Hutchinson still in a great position, leading 37-20. But remember, it was 37-7 at halftime. Scoring update. He stayed on top, 27-24, fourth quarter now over Nickel State. And official comes in from the side, stops play. And Independence elected to take the ball there in the middle of the field. Pirate first down. Exactly 13 minutes remain. Pirates need 17 to tie. Dragon defense has been out there a lot in the second half. Quarterback hangs on to it. Might have been a missed handoff there, and all of a sudden having to run with it. This time I don't think he wanted to was Antoine Wright. He gets very little. Actually might have lost a yard. And on the running play, the clock obviously moving. When they snap it here, close to 12 and a half to play. Ball at the 19 of the Pirates. Dragons doing some shifting around defensively. And it is a quick hitter and a nice gain as out across the 30 to the 33-yard line goes Corinthian Cunningham. First down. I think this Dragon defense is getting a little tired, guys. It's a hot night, and they have been out there a lot in the second half. Relaford makes the tackle, and now he goes down to the ground. Started to limp off before the coaches told him, they, hey, get down. We'll get you off. There is no question that the Dragon coaching staff dialed up a very conservative game plan for the second half. And when Hutchinson has had an opportunity to score, as they did just moments ago, they've not been able to. Pirates, meanwhile, got a nice long drive and then a nice long touchdown throw from Antoine Wright and a couple of touchdowns have made this a much closer game. Pirates. Power Mountain, Garden City, 52-24 with about 5.36 to go in the fourth quarter. Garden City on top. Pirates have been able to do all this, too, without converting a third down. 0 for 12 right now on third down conversions. With the football at their own 33-yard line. Not forced to throw on every play, but on most of them, I would think. And rolling to the right, quarterback loads it up, throws it upfield, and I don't know whether it was caught. Nope, incomplete, right in front of the Pirate bench. Needed it to be at least up around the waist of King, and instead it was down by his cleats, unable on the comeback to get anywhere close to reeling that one in. Second down, 10 at the 33, and now 11.56 to play in this football game. Hutchinson 37, Independence 20. On the run, it is Corinthian Cunningham, and he is cut down for negative yardage. Nice anticipation by the Blue Dragons. 
It will yeah. be third down, about 13. Defensive lineman Jeremiah Fordham got first contact enough to slow him up a little bit, and so the Calvary came and helped out a little bit. Nice job. Keeps that clock moving with 11.30 to go. Third and 13. Pirates need three scores. Wright takes a snap, has time, now runs out of it. Down he goes, back at the 20. Big sack by the Dragon defense, and that will almost certainly force the Pirates to dial up a punt. Latrell Bankston able to penetrate. Wright didn't have much time to get into the last step of his drop, and Bankston was there to supply the heat. Dragons ought to get pretty good field position out of this. Got to be sure hand. I'm not even sure. I don't know whether I try to field this punt or not. We'll see. Punter has been outstanding. Gets off. Gets a good snap. Gets off another beauty. And it is a fumble on the punt. Dragons try to get to it, but the Pirates do. Independence with the football at the Dragon 27-yard line. Flags and now come in flag, on the end flies, of this one. Be celebration. Jamard Morgan, Tank Morgan had a shot at it. He was caught between trying to dive on the ball and keep the pirate defender off of it. And he was a step behind Troy Murray. Murray just beat him to the ball. You're trying to save maybe 10 or 15 yards a roll. Much more important for the Dragons' possession. Let that punt go. Get the football. Take your two or three minutes off the clock. Now it's the Pirates, and if they score here, all of a sudden this is a football game. Officials still haven't unsportsmanlike conduct on. I think it's going to be on Indy, but let's see exactly where they put it. It was originally going to be on the 27. Where the ball was recovered. I'm going to tell you what. And this will force them back. That is a serious, that's a mistake by the Pirates, obviously, but a serious mistake by the Blue Dragons in the kicking game, in my estimation. I know that Marquise Whitmire is normally sure handed. That's one, though, you let go. Let it go, even if it rolls down to the 10 yard line. You still got the football. And at the very least, an opportunity to take a couple of minutes off the clock. It was just a good release by the gunner for the Pirates, and he was right up on Whitmire as he was trying to field it. So as he's backing up like he's done so far this game, he just has that defender in his face and becomes a different pres pressure situation to try to pull it in. That's why I think you don't do it. Now the Dragon defense, again, out there. They have been out there almost the entire second half. Can they get enough stops for Hutchinson to get out of here with a win. Pass play. Lots of time. Now it breaks down. Now the ball thrown at the feet of the intended receiver. Releasing out of the backfield at the last moment was Corinthian Cunningham. Antoine Wright couldn't get it to him. That's kind of a coverage incomplete pass. Yeah, it was a crossing route by Roy Livingston and Marquise King on the outside. Give credit to Latavion Beaton and Art Green switching at the right time to keep King covered up on the sideline. Second down at the Hutchinson 42-yard line. Second and 10. And they throw it out to the left side. A flag flies. And the play goes after the completed pass for almost no gain. That's going to be a big one. Illegal hands to the face by Jamichael Neal. Hit right in the head just as he released that pass. So that's going to give 15 yards back to the Pirates. And instead of third down and 10, it's going to be a first down at the Hutchinson 27-yard line. Hutchinson, as wonderful as it was in the first half of this football game, has at times not played with great intelligence in the second. Jamichael Neal had a great beat on the quarterback, but when he came in to swipe across with those big old palms at six foot three, he just followed through and went right into the helmet of Wright. 10-17 to go. The ball at the 26-yard line of the Blue Dragons. Still a 17-point Hutchinson lead. Dragons have not scored in the second half. 
And quarterback Keefs throws it out to the left side, and a sure-handed tackle on that side of the field holds the play to a short gain of maybe three. Looked like Roy Livingston had a lot of room to run out there, but Latavion Beaton able to close that ground quickly. Now we have another player down. It's another Blue Dragon. And let's go ahead and take the break. Oh, wait a minute. Hang on to it. We're going to getting up quickly and coming off the field under his own power for the Dragons. Bonnie Montgomery. Bonnie Montgomery. He'll be all right. Second down, eight. In fact, Montgomery put the pressure on the quarterback. He turned and saw how wide open Livingston was. He actually jumped up and down, stopping his feet in dismay at how wide open Livingston was that no one was there to cover him. And out of the blue, here came Latavion Beaton to close it out. All right, second down, about eight at the Hutchinson 24-yard line, 37-20 Dragons. Quarterback wants to throw, throws it over the middle. Wide open receiver, and then at the last minute, a remarkable defensive play made by the Dragons coming from almost out of the field of vision of the intended receiver was Blue Dragon Kelvin Clemens. It's a flag down. Coach Rhodes trying to get an explanation from the head linesman. Well, if it's... I would think the Dragons would decline, but we'll see. Depends on... Yeah, they do. They decline it. It is third down and eight at the 24-yard line of the Dragons. Nine and a half minutes to go. And sometimes that clock... Remember when you were a kid, how long it seemed to be from one Christmas to the next? That's how slowly this clock is moving for the Blue Dragon fans. You had Christmas? I didn't have Christmas. We had Christmas in the Hills family. <laughs> Quarterback drops back, steps up into the pocket, wants to run with it, throws short, completes, and a Dragon missed tackle. It might be enough for a first down. He's going to be short. They marked yep. him out of bounds, maybe uh, football shy, it looks like. We got the fourth down try here. King thought he had it, but the official marked him out of bounds just short of the stick. In fact, they've made it more like a yard. Yeah, it is a solid yard. Interesting call here. Pirates need three scores. Still a lot of time to go in this one. Timeout taken by the Blue Dragons. So we'll break two. Here are the relevant numbers. Hutchinson 37, Pirates 20, 9.05 to go. Fourth down and one at about the 17-yard line of Hutchinson. We return to Indy in 30 seconds. HCC Sports is brought to you by the Sportscaster Club members, Portfolio Recovery Associates, Dr. Robert F. of the Hutchinson Clinic, Barkley Plumbing, Burning Chiropractic Center, Tim and Gina Ritter, along with Brian Strange of the Green Vision Group, Sutton Kaufman Transmission Service, Wade Patton Insurance, A&A Builders, Bold Office Shares, Mega Manufacturing, MAYB, Mid-America Youth Basketball, Lowen Corporation, and by Man, Wyatt, and Rice, LLC. These Sportscaster Club members help provide funds for HCC scholarships. Well, this game reminding me a great deal of a lot of the Kansas City Chiefs games last year when the Chiefs built a nice lead in the first half, went conservative in the second half, and although Kansas City won most of those games, they got more entertaining than Chief fans would have liked. That's kind of where we are on this one. But the Blue Dragon defense could make quite a statement here if they can hold on fourth and one at their own 17. Pirates a little bit better on fourth down where they're three of five. They've gone over on third down in 14 attempts. Antoine Wright is the quarterback. He likes to run, takes the snap, drops back, throws left, complete. It'll be a first down at the 14-yard line. Complete to Marquise King. He had a small window to put it in. As far as King being on the sideline, he didn't put it in the best spot. But give credit to King. Nice hands to pull that one in for the first down. And now the football situated at the 14-yard line. 8.47 to play. Hutchinson, 37-20. 
Play action, throw over the middle, incomplete. Nice fake, throw over the middle. Not close to a completion. That's where the lack of accuracy really hurts you. There's not much of a difference you can see in a five to seven yard pass. When you take a shot into the end zone that's 10, 15 yards and more, it's really apparent how far off this quarterback is when it comes to accuracy. Antoine Wright, second down, 10 at the Hutch 14. Dragons threatening blitz. They come after the quarterback. He throws in a hurry, and it is broken up by the Dragons. Nice play defensively for Hutchinson by Latavian Beaton. We've called his name a number of times. It'll be third down and 10. The receiver King batted himself. He had his hands on that one. He dropped it, so he got up and did his punishment push-ups for dropping the ball. Third down, 10. I think the Pirates would take a field goal here. They need three scores. Uh, they trailed by 17. A field goal would get them within 14. Right now, they have aspirations for more than that. On third and 10 at the Hutch 14. Wright drops back. Pressure comes. Wright steps up, wants to run. Breaks to the outside. Doesn't get very far. Sack by the Dragons back near the 20-yard line. The Pirates are 0 for 15 on third down conversions. Good job by the linebacker Morgan for the Blue Dragons to get to him, trip him up, and keep that clock moving right now at 8 10 to go in his fourth quarter of play. 37 20, your score, Hutch on top. And Glenn down on the sideline throughout the season, thanks to the good folks at Jackson Meat. Here comes your field goal. Field goal to make it 37 23. It would be, they put it down at the 26, a 36 yarder, angle from the left. Kick is up. It's long enough. Wide right. And it is wide to the right. And that one really hurt the Pirates. They got the penetration they needed, got down deep into Hutchinson territory. As much as anything, because of a mishandled punt by the Dragons, the Hutchinson defense turns them away. And now can the offense generate Two first downs might be enough to lock this game up. Yeah, when you're down by 30 points, those are the kind of minor things that you can't have to get back into a ball game. That really takes a chunk out of any momentum the Pirates had. It's okay for the Blue Dragons having the opposite effect of that, the opposite side, up 30 points where you've missed two field goals. One missed field goal here could now be the undoing of that momentum swing for the Pirates. See how the Dragons play it? They start at the 20. And they'll start with a run and a nice gain out to the 25-yard line. Grabbed by the ankle was Desmond Jackson. Now you can afford to get a little conservative. You just want to be sure-handed. Don't turn the ball over. Don't do anything stupid. And just uh, take, take control of the, bat, uh, the football. Nice job right there on the run. Second down and five. Two first downs would be huge, particularly if they come with the clock moving. Dragons will let the play clock come down inside 10 before snapping it. Right now, it's at 10. And now, Mason Shucker gets a snap, hands off, and it's a dragon run in a hole. At the 30, at the 35, at the 40, at the 45, at the 50, and run out of bounds at the 43-yard line after a gain of, let's see, 30... Four, about 40 yards, 42 yards. Now let's let a little bit less than that. 36-yard gained by Aaron Collins. The Blue Dragons have it at the Pirate 44-yard line. And all the air has gone out of the Pirate balloon. Yep, and that uh, clock is moving. Chucker did an interesting thing. First half, he's clapping the ball. They're going on the clap. Second half, he's clapping the ball, and they're going on go. So trying to maybe pull off Indy right there, but a little change, just a little subtle things from first half to second half. At the 44-yard line of the Pirates. Again, back to the run. And taking what he can get is Aaron Collins. Got grabbed almost immediately, but managed to push forward for two. That time more, it, more importantly, the clock still moves. That time it was a sure tackle by to Marion Johnson. That last play that was such a big run for Collins, to Marion Johnson was so mad at himself because he came up in the hole where he needed to be and just whiffed on the tackle. Clock has moved under six minutes to play. A 
couple of running backs back there with the Hutchinson quarterback now. They snap it on the reverse. Dragons get to the 40 to the 39-yard line, coming across on the reverse for Hutchinson, Kareem Brown. He did the wise thing, even though he kind of got hogtied down around the ankles. He planted those feet inbounds and stayed in to keep that clock rolling and force Indy to take a timeout. So, 523 left in this football game. It'll be a third down, three and a half for the Dragons when we return to Independence. Right after this, a half-minute break. This is Carter File, president of Hutchinson Community College. The proud tradition of Blue Dragon Athletics continues this fall. I encourage you to take advantage of the Blue Dragon All Sports Ticket. For just $60 for adults and $40 for K-8 through students, you can enjoy over 50 athletic events at Hutchinson Community College. These are general admission tickets that include football, volleyball, men's and women's basketball, baseball, and other selected events. Get yours today at the Sports Arena or at Area Dillon Stores. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and keep current with all Blue Dragon Athletic news and events at bluedragonsports.com. If you're keeping track of timeouts, the Pirates have two left. They need three scores. The biggest indicator that the Pirate fans or even the Faithfuls are kind of out on this, the Faithfuls are the one heading for the exits now. Some people left at halftime. Some of these people you see more as the boosters getting up and leaving after that timeout. Dragons need about three and a half on third down. And they'll throw over the middle. It's dropped. Put it right into the hands of Brad D. Yeah, I mean, Bradley, Dragons needed to make that catch. I've been impressed by the fakes by Mason Shucker in this game early on, more so than later in the game. But everything he was doing, especially in the first half, just threw the Pirates completely in the wrong direction of where the play was actually going. But it's those drop passes. You remember Leroy Watson, the fourth, had one early in the game that really stopped, have stopped the drives. Dragons will punt, try to get the ball inside the 20, something that that Hutchinson punter has been good at. We're talking about Matt Jones. At least four times this season inside the 20. Gets it off. And it takes an unfortunate Hutchins and bounce into the end zone. So come out to the 20. Still 519 to go. The door has not been slammed shut on the chances of the Independence Pirates. The Dragon offense has done not much in the second half other than kill time. They killed a little bit of time. You'd like for your defense maybe to put the cap on this. They already have that pick six off of that beautiful lateral that worked out. You know, that's the kind of play you would see NFL players try to maybe pull off in a Pro Bowl. Because when it works, it works. But if it fails, you get in big trouble. All right. Pirates have a long ways to go. 80 yards. Quarterback loads it up, throws it out in the flat, completes it out to about the 27-yard line. That throw once again to Marquise King. Dragons will give them short gains, but they'd like to keep them in bounds. Second down and a couple as they give King credit out to the 28-yard line. Now the throw to the left side, picked off the fingertips or off, off the turf. It's a completion, but it'll be shy of the first down, gain of about a yard. It'll be third down, and by this snap, under five minutes to play. Antoine Wright, hands off, and they'll get the first down on the run by Corinthian Cunningham. Clock will stop while they move the chains. Lopsided stats at halftime in favor of Hutchinson. Will have evened up in the second half, but the Dragons still in an enviable spot on the scoreboard at 37-20. Jalen Pinkney really coming up limping after that one, more so than we've seen any other player limp today. This looks to be more severe than the other injuries we've seen so far. There have been a lot of stoppages in these games. I'm not sure the game of football was meant to be played in 85, 90-degree temperatures late at night. Can you imagine what it would have been like this afternoon? 
Dragons will play next Saturday afternoon in Gallon Stadium against Iowa Western. But we are supposed to have a relatively cool and wet week ahead in the Salt City. All right, finally ready to play football again. 4.55 to go. Pirates at their own 35. Another pass play. Antoine Wright rolling, throws it upfield, completes. Short of the first down, the toss into the hands of Marquel Odom, and he has it at the 41-yard line. Hurry up offense for the Pirates. Back to throw again. Now quarterback will run with it and dives to the ground to avoid contact, and that will be a late hit on the Dragons. Wright gave himself up. Clarence Hicks maybe forgot that it was the quarterback and thought it was more of a runner. And once the quarterback gave himself up, you can't touch him. Hicks went ahead and did the pelvic thrust on through as if he was making a normal run-of-the-mill tackle. And that is a correct 15-yard penalty against the Blue Dragons, who continue to play with enthusiasm, but not necessarily here in the second half with a great deal of intelligence. It was almost like Clarence Hicks was surprised at what he was seeing because he, it's always in his mind to fire through, pop those hips with as much power as you can, and he just caught, caught between there in a gray area. So the ball situated now at the Hutchinson 43-yard line, and we have a break in the action. A timeout will take 30 seconds, 428 to go in the game. Dragons still lead by 17. RCAT is now part of a regional transportation partnership with Sedgwick County Transportation and Wichita Transit. We are working together to provide rides to Wichita and back on Tuesdays. Wichita Transit has fixed route and paratransit service available within the city. Round trip costs range between $19 and $27. Advanced registration with RCAT is required. RCAT is first come, first served general public transportation. Call 694-2913 for details. You are listening to Blue Dragon Football on KHUT Hutchinson. It's Hutchinson's Country Station, Country 102.9, 428 left, Dragons up 37-20. Nichols in overtime, 26-23 over Kansas. Final? Final. Yes. That's a tough loss. That is a tough loss. Pirates need to make it happen pretty quickly. And they're going to take a chance here pretty quickly. They won't be on this play because the Dragons get to Antoine Wright for a big loss back on the other side of the 50. And now flags fly. Clarence Hicks momentarily made up for the late hit on the quarterback moments ago with a big sack. But he messed up when he did his excessive celebrating right after. He did kind of a bolting move, if you will. As he went down to a knee, when the referee saw that, he immediately threw the flag to the lights. On Sports Mike. Dragons were relatively penalty-free last week in the win over Ellsworth, Iowa. This is a team he that a year ago. He was kicked out, guys. A year ago, struggled with all kinds of penalties. And that's an automatic first down. Dumb. Now the ball at the Hutchinson 36-yard line. Now they're going to talk about it because the, the PA announcer said that he was disqualified. And they're going to come over and talk about it. Well, it would have to be his second unsportsmanlike. And I don't recall Clarence getting a first. Officials confer across the way. Once again, this game has gotten to be lengthy. We are three minutes and seven seconds in and a good while from finishing. Well, we'll have to check for the status there because that would, I think, mean he couldn't play next week. That would be costly. He has been disqualified. I guess they could have gotten him for his first one on that late hit. Quarterback is going to be dragged down inbounds back at the 43-yard line on the scramble. Antoine Wright 
just couldn't find enough room to get anything done, and he loses about seven on first down. More importantly, the clock moves. 3.50 and marching down. Right back to throw, throws as hard as he can, and it is caught, and a busted play, and this will be a touchdown for the Pirates. For the Pirates, once again, very successful. Reuben Flowers hauls it in. And the Dragons continue to let the Pirates hang around. Hutchinson in the first half looked like one of the very best teams that you could find anywhere in the country. In the second half, they have been, I won't say the total opposite, but they have not been very impressive. Well, they've given up the big play. They they haven't done the things that a good team does to put away an opponent. Extra points up and good. And now it is a 10-point game and probably an onside kick coming up. We'll see what happens in half a minute. No time to fix breakfast? Just call us at Anchor Away, 662-3100, and we'll have it ready for you. Choose from our selection of breakfast burritos, biscuits, or one of our five different complete breakfast plates. Breakfast from 7 to 1030, Monday through Saturday. If you missed us for breakfast, we're here for lunch and dinner, too. Pick up your favorite Mexican dinner or take some home for the family. We're open till 9. That's Anchor Away, drive through carry-out, and catering under the water tower at B and Adams in Hutchinson, 662-3100. Well, the Independence Pirates have acquitted themselves very well in the second half. They could have quit at halftime. They were down to a very good team by 30. Instead, they have come out here in the second half, shut out the Dragons, scored 21 points of their own, and now with 3.34 to go in the game are within 10, and you can bet this will be an onside kick. Timeout taken by the Blue Dragons. All right. That will be the final timeout for the Dragons. Pirates have two. Gives us an opportunity to take one more half-minute break. Next Tech Wireless Advanced Pay gives you great coverage, 4G LTE data, and you'll love the price. Plans start at $25 a month. Next Tech Wireless Advanced Pay is hassle-free, too. No contracts, no credit checks, and you can even bring your own device. Sign up now and get a free month of service when you purchase a new device or receive a free Moto E smartphone with new activation. It's Advanced Pay at Next Tech Wireless, starting at just $25 per month. The Dragons played marvelously in the first half, but they find themselves hanging on with 3.34 to go in the game. That once 30-point lead has dropped to 10. And here comes the onside kick. Got to go 10 yards, and it does, and Independence has it. At the 49-yard line. It seemed, Perfectly executed. It seemed like Trayvon Fullwood may have gotten there just before it reached 10 yards, but there was no covering official to tell whether or not he was a little bit early. Give credit to the frontline guys on that kickoff team for blowing off the two Blue Dragon players that were waiting for that ball to come in to give Fullwood an open shot at recovering. That really changes it. Down by 10 with 3.33 to go. All right. Offense has been on the field the whole second half, and the Dragon defense has to be tired. Back to throw right, throw short underneath. And it is caught at the Hutchinson 47-yard line, inbound, so the clock will continue to move. I don't think anybody in the stadium thought the Pirates had a chance at halftime, except perhaps some of the Pirates. They do. Another throw. Throw middle of the field, complete for a first down at the Hutchinson 38-yard line. Clock will stop while they move the chains. Still three minutes to play in this football game. Mm -hmm. 
Antoine Wright trying to direct the most improbable of comebacks. Being chased. Dragon defender falls down. Ball thrown out of bounds. 2.43 to go. Second down at the Hutchinson 38-yard line. Hutchinson 37. Independence 27. Which is the real Blue Dragon football team? The terrific team we saw in the first half? Or the team that has been shut out in the second? Dragons trying to hang on, get a win. That's important. Ball thrown out to the left side. Complete short gain on the play. Seven or eight yards, but out of bounds, freezing. They haven't frozen the clock yet. And I'm not sure why it ran, but it ticked off two or three seconds. They had to put... They really should put three seconds back on the clock. Jason Brown arguing that they'll go up to 238. The officials have it covered. Third down, six. Flags fly before the snap. And nobody ever actually got set. Strange football game. It'll be a false start on the Pirates. Makes it third down and 11. If the Dragons can get the Pirates off the field one more time without the Pirates scoring, Hutchinson should come away with a win. Pirates, of course, with other ideas. And the Pirates have the kind of receivers to make you mighty nervous. Antoine Wright sits back in the gun. Jason Brown having a conversation with the White Hat about why after the ball was marked ready for play, the clock was started. And that's the conversation he's having with Jason Brown. That's why he was upset. That's why the Pirates were racing to the line and never actually got set and forced themselves into that false start penalty. Clock, of course, stopped on the penalty. 2.33 to go. Antoine Wright drops back, steps up in the pocket, unloads, completes his pass out to the 32-yard line, well short of the first down. It'll be fourth down and four. And the tackle, now they said he got out of bounds. Fourth down and four. Oh, for 16 now on third down are the Pirates. Got to make it happen here. Plenty of time to throw. Now, starts to run out of time. Floats it upfield, out of bounds, and that'll end this drive and probably preserve a win for the Blue Dragons. Unless there's a flag I don't see, and I don't think there is one. And there was a collective groan again from the fans because Antoine Wright, he's in that situation where it's a fourth down. You have to at least give the ball a chance. And he threw it away as if he had another down to try and get the first down. So the Dragons will get it back with 2.04 to go. Pirates can stop it twice with timeouts. Hutchinson trying to move to 2-0 and and get a mighty big win over the number five team in the nation on the Pirates' home field. It looked like it might come easily at halftime. It has not. Now you need to be sure-handed. Make the Pirates use their timeouts. Use the play clock. There's the handoff. And immediately upended is Aaron Collins. Pirates will stop it with 1.59 to go. They can stop it one more time. First time we've really seen from Sheldon Celestine. He was such an impactful player for this Pirate team out in Dodge City. Made a really good play that time seeing the pulling guard. There's a timeout on the field. Dragons by 10, a 30-second break. Hi, Brian Bobo, General Manager at Midwest Supersource. It's a holiday weekend, and we're going to celebrate, but only for a short time. We will only be open from 10 to 4 on Labor Day, and we are having our penny over sale. That's right, a penny over on all new Ford and Toyotas. We didn't forget about pre-owned. We have reduced prices on all of our inventory. Remember, you only have a short time, so come see us on Labor Day from 10 to 4, or visit us online at MidwestSuperStores.com.
Second down, 13 for the Blue Dragons. The only relevant numbers, though, really, other than the score, 37-27, the minute 59 that remains on the clock. Pirates have one timeout left. If the Dragons run here, don't pick up a first down, Pirates will spend that timeout. But they can't stop it after that. And if I'm the Blue Dragons, I might try to run to the edge and use a little bit of time at least trying to get there. But instead, they're going to go straight ahead, and they get a nice gain out across the 35 to the 37-yard line, running hard, Aaron Collins. Aaron Collins has clearly become the number one back for this football team. Yeah, he did some nice things this evening. One was tight rope walk, tight rope walking that sideline for a key first down back in the first half. Another time now taken, that'll be the last for Indy. And while they take the break, let's take a break for our sponsors. We return in half a minute. Dragons looking at third and five. Most of us dream of retiring and having financial security. Do you have a plan? This is Jay Pitzer with Strategic Financial Concept. Our mission is to help create and maintain wealth for our clients through effective risk and asset management. I'd love to sit down with you and show you how we can help you keep more of your hard-earned money over your lifetime. Call 960-0749 for a cup of coffee and for the best one-on-one -on -one conversation you've ever had with an advisor. Securities offered through the ON Equity Sales Company, member FINRA, SIPC, Investment Advisory Services, is offered through Owen Investment Management Company. Well, five yards on third down for the Blue Dragons would eliminate any doubt. Pirates are now out of timeouts. And the Dragons, Collins breaks to the outside. That'll do it. To the 45, to the 50, to the 45, and down to the 40-yard line with a... Game-clinching run for the Blue Dragons. And wisely, he got himself down in bounds. They'll stop the clock momentarily to move the chains. The Pirates sold out on that one. Five down linemen. And once Collins was past that first wave, he had an open romp. Now the Blue Dragons, all they really need to do is, they can almost take a knee three times. Don't think they'll do that, but they could. 37-27, clock on the march, no timeouts for the Pirates. 12 on the play clock. Now the Dragons, yeah, they are going to take a knee. Jalen Irwin on the back side of this victory formation. And there's the first knee. And there's nothing the Pirates can do. Now give the Pirates a lot of credit. I think this is going to turn into a good football team for Jason Brown. Uh, they could have quit at halftime. They did not. They came out in the second half, outscored the Dragons 20 to nothing. But Hutchinson, with that nearly flawless first half offensively and defensively, just simply had manufactured a lead that was insurmountable. Brown probably unsure what team took the field that first half. It's kind of like that opening home game last year against Iowa Western. He said, I didn't know that team. I don't know who those guys were that got whipped out there. They thought they were just going to come out and get a victory. I'm sure he got some flashbacks of that, at least in the first half. There's the final knee of this football game. The Dragons will walk off to the side, and this one will come to a close. A mighty big win for Hutchinson Community College. Final score in Independence. It is Hutchinson 37, Independence 27. And Jason Brown walking across the field, and we'll see what he has to say to... The Hutchinson coach, a handshake, and he just keeps right on going. Wasn't any conversation that we could detect, but Coach Brown did shake the hands of Hutchinson coach Ryan Rhodes. That's big because it was so important for him last year to say, I didn't even shake his hand before the game. He shakes it here. Not only that, he's not able to walk off and say, I own this conference, at least not in this moment. 37-27, our final. We'll take a two-minute break and come back. Let the celebration begin for the Blue Dragons. It's football season, when the weather is warm one day and cold the next. Stay ahead of cold and flu season by drinking plenty of liquids, getting enough rest, and keeping your hands sanitized. Come see the friendly folks at Ashcraft Pharmacy, your locally owned Health Mart Pharmacy, for over-the-counter medications to help alleviate symptoms. And if you need a prescription, we offer free mail-out, free delivery, or call ahead for our handy curbside service. Go Dragons! 
from Ashcraft Pharmacy in the Heart Shopping Center, South Hutchinson, and Health Mart, caring for you 